My name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Welcome to Sunday Things. What's today? Sunday 603-703 testing. Uh, I really want to be sure about the whole um, 603 versus 703 thing. And so we're going to test this again. Um, uh, yeah. I was I was watching some of the footage um, yesterday and um, I thought I could maybe tell a little bit of a difference in that the 603s were um, had a little bit better response time and were a little bit like crisper. Uh, the beginning and ends of moves, I think maybe were, uh, yeah, a little bit more aggressive. And uh, that's one of the things that I'm not loving about 75 versus 65. It's just lazy. The beginning and end of, ends of moves are, are very lazy. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to get rid of that. So we're gonna test again today. Um, this is a Q&A live stream as they all are. So dump any questions that you've got into the chat and we'll talk about them. Um, but yeah, Brad Monden says, God dang it, that was a long intro. Uh, that was actually a lot shorter of an intro than normal. Um, Live streams have longer intros so that people can file into the chat. I have, I have, it's funny. I I cut that intro short and there's like nobody in the chat. Usually I let it run longer so that more people can come and enjoy the live stream. Um, but yeah, I just realized, Brad, you might have been kidding. Uh, so that's the main thing that I want to do today is just retest these guys. 0802 versus 0603. Uh, 30,000 KV on both. Um, and I also want to celebrate the fact that I finished up the, I thought you were kidding. I, I, yeah, I get it now, Brad, my bad. <laughs> I was like, wait, is that the same guy that was bitching last time? And then I'm like, no, Brad Mason was not bitching. Um, I also, um, I'm here to celebrate the fact that I've finished ripping eight motors apart and swapping the, uh, the bells over. I've now got the most Ciotti FPV, uh, motors of all time. Look at this. Uh, so we've got red and boy, oh boy, is it tough to, to see it in there, which is super sad. I wish it was a little bit more obvious, but, um, we've got, hold on, we've got red and purple motors, my friends. Hold on. Focus, you bastard. You can kind of see it down there. See the red, the red stator. It's, yeah, it's hard to see. There, you can see it on the bottom. Red and purple, yo. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? It's not that cool. It's kind of cool. It's all right. Um, yeah, got it done. All four of them are spinning fine. Um, man, I had a hell of a time getting uh, the last two of the of the um, the bells out of the red staters, just like that one that um, 
we were working on on stream. No, the one on stream went fine. After the stream, I did one more motor the next day, and I could not get. I don't know. I don't get it. Like the the motor shaft would not come out of the stator. Um, the very bottom of the motor shaft where the C clip goes was slightly bigger for some reason. Um, and it would not go through the, the bearing. I had to, or the bushing rather. Um, I had to flip this. I had to bolt. This happened on three motors in a row. It didn't happen on that one on the live stream, but the next three motors that I did, um, I had to like put this up upside down. I had to put the motor into a frame, put the frame upside down on my solder reel and then smash on it with a, with a screwdriver and a, um, uh, yeah, it was really hard to get it out of there. Um, I think the bushings on the, uh, oh no, 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 that's not true. The bushings on the red staters are fine. The red 30,000 KV staters are fine. Um, it was the, uh, it's these motor shafts it, on these, um, on these 0802 30,000 KZ onesies. For some reason, the bottom of the motor shaft is it like it's just a little bit too big. Very, very weird. I, I've I've never, um, I've never had that happen before. That was super confusing. Um, I've now got a set of 0802 27,000 kV motors with purple stator bases and red motor bells. I've now got three 0802 27,000s. One of them, the motor shaft, is more bent than anything I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, you can probably see it. Hold on. Ready? Let's see if I can get this just right. Oh, you can just see it from there. You don't even need me to roll the damn thing. But look at that motor shaft on the left. These motors were run on a fractal frame. See that? Look at that! Oh! <laughs> Look how bent that is. This is what the fractal frame does to motors if you crash a bunch. It it just bends the balls out of the um out of the motor shaft because you know, picture that your your stator is screwed down to a carbon a solid carbon fiber frame, right? And then the the motor shaft kind of doesn't have anywhere to go because it goes right into that bearing. So all of that force from the crashes just dumps into this um into the top part of the motor shaft here and just bends the shit out of it. Is it just the one motor? I think it's just the one motor. So if if you want three 0802s and maybe you have another one of these stators, I didn't, I wasn't looking, hold on, was that one bad? Look. Oh yeah, that one's really bad too, wow, okay. Uh, I've now got two <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm Hold on. Did I just test? I think I might have tested the same one twice. Uh, yeah, that one's bent, but it, th this one's not that bad. So that one's okay. What about this one? This is not my favorite way to test motors. My favorite way is to... Oh, that one's so bent. Okay, so this one's garbage. Uh, I'm I'm actually going to throw these away because the, once they're bent that bad, they are fully garbage. Um so this is the other bent one. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Uh, my favorite way to test this is to put them on a rig, no props on, and then spin them up really slow in the motors tab and just look and you'll see the motor shaft wiggling back and forth. If you can't see it, you take your motor shaft is here. You take your fingernail and you very gently put your fingernail against the motor shaft. And if it's wobbling like that, you'll feel it. Tick, 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 you'll feel it. Tap your finger. You don't want that. You want to be able to touch your finger to it and have it just be zzz, just like a constant touch rather than like tapping your finger. Um, let's try this last one here. That one's fine. I've got two, two perfectly good. Uh, no, it doesn't make any sense to um, to get two from me. Uh, so I'm going to keep these. I'm, I'm going to keep these two. Man, I do not have a single use for these one millimeter motor shaft onesie bells. There's not any reason for me to keep these. Um, so, if you are in need of a happy model slash tiny whoop 
Um, 0802 Bell. They're all the same. The magnets are all the same. The only thing that changes between motors is the KV. Is with KV is the stator. The bells stay exactly the same. So this will work on any um, any 802 that has a bell that looks like this. They they all look like this. Even if uh, this will probably actually even work on the uh, newbie drone 802s, the old school newbie drone 802s. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep these. I don't have a use for them. Uh, if you do, let me know. And they're all yours. The motor shafts are not bent on these two. Uh, these two were probably at the rear of the carbon fiber frame. You know, um, these motors were also on another carbon fiber frame. Um, the the prototype of the Cockroach V3. Uh, you guys, if, if you were super paying attention, I'd be blown away if anybody remembered this. But I did mention how... Uh, these 0802 30,000 KV Tiny Whoop Danger Onesies um, had newbie drone plugs on them for a while. And I ran them on the Acrobee. Uh, that was around the time that the Cockroach 65 V3 prototypes came to me with the carbon fiber braces. And these were the motors that were on that um, as well. The, these motors were not on the fractal frame for very long. They were on that prototype Cockroach frame for much longer. Um, and yeah, it also has that. I was, I was trying out that carbon fiber brace on the bottom, which does the exact same thing, right? Any kind of like, uh, an, an all plastic whoop frame is one thing. And then any kind of bracing that's carbon fiber that gets run completely changes the game. And it really does stiffen it up like that. That's the point of it. But What's wild is with tiny whoops, we don't need that stiffness. That that additional stiffening doesn't accomplish anything meaningful, and the the um, the problems that it causes are way worse. Um, impedes the airflow, durability are the two main ones. Um, so yeah, it's really not a good situation. You really want tiny whoops to be in plastic frames. They they just do pretty much everything better. Um, yeah, you can't push your filters quite as far, but you're sacrificing maybe a half of a millisecond in latency, maybe one millisecond in latency. That's, that's you know, unless you're Min Chan Kim, and even he wouldn't be able to, to, to tell the difference in a one millisecond or partial millisecond um, change in latency. So, yeah, unless you're significantly better than MCK, you're not going to notice. And it's really beyond like not noticing. It's not a significant enough difference. Like you're not going to not hit something by one millisecond. It's just not going to happen. Um, so yeah, very interesting, like super obvious example of why carbon fiber braces on these little tiny whoops that you're going to crash a good amount are a, uh, tend to be a bad idea. Uh, but don't believe me. Try it for yourself. Get get yourself a Cockroach V365 and the little carbon fiber brace plate, blaze, base plate. Get a set of motors that you don't love. Put them on there and you'll see very quickly after a bunch of crashes that they're just absolutely annihilated. Um, uh, Gray Hat, do you need these? I, I haven't shipped your, uh, your package yet. Never mind. They're already gone. Look at that. Uh... Yeah, I didn't get it shipped out. I've, I've, so Maggie's been uh, on a little writing retreat because she's the smartest person on earth and knows how to live. Um, and so I've had the, uh, the I've had to keep the kiddos alive for the last like three days, um, and I just didn't get as much work done as I thought. So they're in there, brother. Cool, perfect. Uh, I would if if I'd kept them, they would have just sat in a box forever because they're a one millimeter motor shaft, and yeah. Uh, so that's the main thing I want to do today. Just a little bit more testing, um, with the walk snail set up just to make absolutely sure that 0802 is the right choice. The, what, what we, if, if you didn't see the last time I did the testing on this, which I guess was Wednesday of last week, maybe Monday. Um, so 0603, 0802, 30,000 KV, um, now the 802s have one and a half millimeter motor shafts on them, but th that doesn't change the flight performance really. If anything, it makes it slightly worse. Um, but the uh... ah, okay, sounds good, Greyhat. Yeah, message me. Um, 
what I realized is that I, I couldn't really tell a difference. Uh, I couldn't tell a significant difference between these two in terms of flight feel, um, which makes sense. They're both at 30,000 KV. They're both powerful motors. Um, what I could definitely tell was that the 603 was warm when it came down and I've never had a tiny whoop motor. I've never brought a tiny whoop in and touched the motors and, it, and been able to feel any temperature in them. Um, I don't know why, but it's just something that's never happened. For the first time with these 603s, um, I was able to feel some temperature in the motors and that kind of freaks me out. Like on one hand, I kind of like that because it means that we're we're working the motors and like if if we choose a motor you know the the perfect motor choice for a given quad is a motor that just barely heats up because that means that we've chosen a motor that's as small as possible um so a motor that just barely heats up but never overheats uh and it's always kind of freaked me out that tiny whoop motors have never been hot and and I and I've always kind of just written it off as maybe they just don't make enough power or they have more airflow for some weird reason or maybe it has to do with the hub design right like we have tiny little hubs on these motors so the propeller the the inside of the the actual blade of the propeller blows directly down on the motor um, with a lot of with a lot of bigger quads that doesn't necessarily happen like the hub although these 1804s it does happen um but 1804 is a fairly wide motor um so yeah i i, I haven't really understood it. It, it it it's it's just i have a hard time just saying like oh well they're tiny whoops the, the motors just won't heat up um it it, it, it just doesn't like why not? What why would why would anything with a tiny whoop be different than the rest of what we fly? Um, so that's always felt kind of weird. Um, so maybe these six hundred threes are the right choice. Maybe they are them being a little bit lighter uh, and a little bit taller and not as wide. Um, maybe this is the actual perfect motor. Um, I... All that being said. These 603s are barely lighter than these 802s, and I would kind of rather have a motor that runs cooler if there's not a noticeable difference in flight performance. Um, the problem that I'm having is, in order to test these things back to back, I only have one of these walk snail um, canopy VTX AIO setups. That's not true. I have the 65 millimeter rig. What I was about to say is what makes back to back testing these hard is I have to fly this one and then I have to unplug all four motors. I have to take all four screws out. I have to pull the whole stack off. I have to get the stack put back in here. I have to screw everything down. I have to plug the motors in. I have to go into beta flight. I have to get the motors spinning the right direction. And then I can fly on the different set of motors. That takes five to 10 minutes. And in those five to 10 minutes, I basically forget the 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 little like nuances of how this flies. What I'm going to try today is flying three batteries in a row on this with the 0603s and then the last battery uh, switch it over and then the last battery on the 802s. If I still can't tell a difference uh what I just realized that I'm going to have to do, I don't have to, but I think I want to do is to tear apart the the 65 millimeter rig um and put that into one of these frames and then take them both into beta flight and match everything up in beta flight the only problem with that is that oh wait no this is a beta F yeah yeah the, the 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 problem with that is uh the 65 millimeter freestyle walk snail build is on that stupid Happy Model Cross AIO um, with the long USB port. Maybe this will be my excuse to take that apart, to, to pull that apart and um, take that AIO out of there and replace it with, I got another one of these Beta FPV 5 amps. 
Um, and that would have all of the walk snail rigs on the exact same AIO. Th this beta FPV AIO is obviously the right one for walk snail builds. Um, this is the F4 1S 5 amp ELRS cross style um, AIO. So, yeah, th if you're going to do one of these walk snail builds, that's the AIO to get. Just, it's, it's, it is. Uh, so, yeah, the, um, I just had this build apart too. This is the um, this is the 65 walk snail build. It looks a little bit different uh, because I have taken the orange uh, weeb lead frame off of it now. Who who is addicted to the color orange that wants this frame? Um, this weeb lead sent me one of of every color on these frames, um, and. I would love. Who's the biggest fan of orange in chat that that wants this? I'll uh, I'll send it to you for basically the price of shipping. But do me a favor and buy some stickers or something else, and I'll throw it in for you. Um, done, Danzilla, you get it. Um, Danzilla, send me a message somewhere. Uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want, and uh, this is all yours. I, I was gonna do it just the first person to to um, to say something in the chat. Uh, how about neon yellow? This is like full-blown day glow. I want to see somebody. Here's the deal. I will send this to you for the price of shipping, but you need to commit to putting uh, UV LEDs in the rig because this is uh, a shade of... It's a fluorescent enough yellow that it absolutely explodes when it gets hit by um, UV light. So, yeah. I will send this to you for nothing. You First person to message me. But, like I said, you must set this up with ultraviolet LEDs. Um, I will help you out with that. I will help you with that task. I will also send you, uh, this is from tinywoop.com. Uh, this is a, a little four LED. It's like infinitely lightweight, tiny, tiny, tiny little super thin wires. And then four individual sets here that go to wow you are just in another level of lack of focusing today logitech uh four tiny little uv led chips uh that you can set up with this so yeah for for whoever wants to do a uh um yeah whoever likes the yellow the color yellow you can do a a lakers build with purple and yellow but the the purple of these leds will light this yellow up like crazy um, so yeah, message me uh, if you want this yellow. First first message I read with the yellow um, wins. Uh, but you got to do it. You got to actually do the build. That's the deal. I'm, I'm willing to send you... This LED thing was like another five bucks. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to send this to you. Um, but you have to do the build like sooner than later and, and get us some pictures. Because it just, you know, it would be cool looking. Uh, so message me, and uh, yeah, I'll get you on the road to a, a cool, bright-ass yellow build. What do you think of that? Um, but So yeah, I pulled this out of the orange frame, uh, the 65mm the freestyle build, and I put it into a black uh, Cockroach 65 V3. Um, I, I just, I, I kind of got tired of the, the ducts deforming a little bit, um, and I'm just blown away by these Cockroach frames, so... Yeah, but I do, and yeah, I do need to get this uh, this AIO out of here. So, you know, what? I'm just gonna decide right now to to do that. This will be great, actually, because this will be my excuse uh, to use one of the uh, 180 degree the uh, the uh, the BT 2.0 lead that I put on this rig originally. I made it like like one millimeter too short. And it's really annoying that it's one millimeter too short. So I will, I, I'm, all right, yeah, this kind of decides it. I, I'm still going to do this flight testing today, just, just in case I can figure it out. But, um, yeah, I'm going to fix this rig. Because in this frame, the, the, the BT 2.0 being a little bit too short is even more obnoxious. So, yeah, the, the 65 mil walk snail rig is going to get a proper AIO to get rid of this stupid happy model cross. Um... And it's going to get a 180 
BT 2.0 leads, so we'll see how these are. And uh, and then I'll probably be putting it into the 75 millimeter frame so that we can test these head to head. Um, that's kind of per. That's funny that it worked out like that because <laughs> somebody will. Th this will this will make somebody very happy. Uh, right now we've got the clear canopy on the gray frame. Um, by the end of the stream, I'm going to have moved this over into this clear frame. And it just happens to be that on the 65 millimeter rig, it's a smoke crotch gray canopy. So we'll be putting the smoke crotch gray canopy onto the gray frame. And by the end of the stream, we'll have the clear canopy on the clear frame. You're welcome. You're welcome, fellow crazy person. Uh, you're in good company here. <laughs> I got some builds stacking up over here. Shit. All right. Uh, the other build that I'm going to do one of these days, uh, is a, uh, 0802 33,000, uh, KV motor build, which I'm kind of curious to put. All right. I'm also going to try. Yeah. All right just to like test everything before I do a 65 millimeter build with these 802 33,000s, I'm going to put these onto a 75 millimeter frame with by blades and put the, and put the walk snail 75 thing into it so that we will have tested everything. Um, and, and we'll know if 802 33,000s, this will kind of, this will really myth bust what's the maximum KV that we can run the 1.6 inch by blades on. Um, I feel like it has to be 30,000 KV, but I've been wrong about this before with 1.2 inch props. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll do the testing. All right. So I'm going to put this with this because these motors, uh, these motors need to come off this pink frame and go on to this Mobula 7 V4 frame, um, which is a gram heavier, but that's okay. That That's not gonna ruin the, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, it, it's a gram heavier than the Meteor 75 Air frames that I've kind of decided are the way to go because they're the lightest. Um, so yeah, okay. We'll have done all the testing, which, I swear to God, every single time that I that like I don't do all of the testing, I just end up retesting it at some point because I'm not happy with the amount of data that I've got or whatever. Um, so I might as well just do it right off the rip here and yeah, we'll be good to go. So this is top priority here. I'm just making myself a little, I'm just getting the on deck circle set up on my left here. Uh, this camera can go back here because we're going to wait on that guy. Uh, this can go over here. Actually, I will move the camera over. Okay, cool. So we've got a plan. There's a plan in place. I don't know if it's a good plan, but it's a plan. It's a good plan. It's definitely a good plan. Uh, what's up, everybody? What are you guys up to? What are you beautiful people up to? Nothing? All right, that's fine. Uh, six batteries a day today will be spent mainly on these 75 millimeter rigs. And uh, yeah, we got that going for us. So happy days are here again. Computer's working, that's pretty nice. It still does that weird freeze thing. I don't understand what the hell that is, but. As long as it's working, I'm happy. Uh, in the chat, Brad Munden was first. Troy Prelog was next. Michael Kajas, Cole Powers, Bob Bruce, Apache Spoken Wooded Sniper, uh, David 4F, Douglas Otwell, Simon, Brad Munden again, Brandon's Baked Beans, Not Applicable, Adam Weston, Frank Nicholas, Gray Hat. YouTube just did the thing. Where was I? There we go. Uh, v Pro, Denzel the Terrible, Northern Tier. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? 
If you want to talk directly to me in the chat, I'll get to do is type C -I -F -P -V. If you do that, it'll light up an orange. Apache Smoke Wounded Sniper did it and said, Good evening, Gangly Gang and CIDF TV. How's everybody doing this Sunday? Brandon's Baked Bean says, I'm designing a light 5 inch for mid range cinematic and light freestyle. Hopefully, my prototype does what I want it to do. How light, Brandon? And what's, what's, it, uh, what's it designed to carry? What camera system is it designed to carry? Uh, Brad Monin said, Oh, no, we got that. Uh, Adam Weston says, uh, stream isn't showing up on regular YouTube. I only saw it on Patreon. What? 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 Oh, shit. It's unlisted, isn't it? Son of a bitch. I made the last stream unlisted. And then I copied the, uh, damn it. And then I copied the, the stream settings from the last stream. Well, it's public now. Shit, that was dumb. Although, you know, this is kind of interesting. So there's 25 people in here, which is way low. Um, what, this is a cool little experiment we just did. For the last, like, 40 minutes, the only way that you could have found out about this stream was from Patreon or Facebook or Discord. So 25 people come from those, 25 people came from those places. Um, unfortunately, it's now a half an hour in. So I'm sure that a bunch of people clicked on YouTube at like three o'clock Eastern and didn't see me and then just went away. Um, but yeah, wow, not, not many people come from I would have thought way more people than this came from Discord, Patreon, um, Facebook. But I guess it makes sense. People probably know the stream schedule at this point and just type in youtube.com. And and when you're when you're live, uh, YouTube, wow, 20 okay, we just 10 11 people just popped up. <laughs> yeah, okay. So most people actually find these streams from YouTube. For anybody that just came in, I, my apologies. I the the uh Friday's live nightmare of a live stream, which was like 2 minutes long. Um I made it unlisted and then I copied the stream settings. I just wasn't thinking and when I set this stream up here today, I copied the stream settings from Friday and it copied the unlisted stream setting. So I've been streaming for the last 35 minutes in an unlisted state, um, which won't show up on, on YouTube. Thank you for letting me know that, uh, Adam Weston. Uh, Gray Hat says, can't hang, but hope it flies amazing. Uh, got that. I did a couple of these uh, comments out of order. Uh, the from Okay, cool. Could you do a stick can sometime? Stick cam sometime. Uh, I want to see how you manage the throttle on this build. It's it's pretty hard to do a stick cam, um, but I think I've done it maybe once before. I think like this camera, I can kind of point at my penis, and then so like if the transmitter's here, I'm gonna get a transmitter right here. So. If the transmitter's here, nah. yeah, no, it's difficult to do. Uh, hold on. This camera does have like a weird little mount on it. So what if I do that? So if I do that, now it just wants to fall. Stop falling. Oh, there we go. So I could do like that. But you're looking at it upside down. I mean, I guess I could rotate the image. Um, you can kind of hear it. Uh, I, if, if I remember, I can point the uh, the directional microphone across the room, and then you can hear it. Um, and I can try to stop screaming for five seconds, and then you'll definitely be able to hear it. Um, I'm not a big fan of stick cams, so I'm I'm usually pretty uh pretty resistant to doing them. Uh but there's no but. <laughs> there's no but. 
Uh, cool. I just made a whole bunch more work for myself. Awesome. I'm good at that sometimes. V Pro says I've been going through five batteries a day on my first Mobula Six for the last seven days. It's mostly fine. Just motors got some play in them, but who cares about nineteen thousand kV motors? Thanks for all the info. You're certainly welcome. Um, yeah, the 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 shit motors that the Mobulas come with are perfect to just bang the shit out of until they explode, and then you can get some good ones. Um, so yeah, you're doing it right, V Pro. Gray Hat says, uh, could you add some extra weight to the analog to to make them weigh the same? Uh, certainly could, certainly could, uh, but the, the walk snail system draws, I, I, I don't think I would want to test like that, uh, for two main reasons. The, the walk snail system draws an unbelievable amount of power. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if an analog rig literally made more power than a walk snail rig. Um, the big thing, though, is the latency difference. Flying the analog rig would be very low latency, and it would feel completely different in the air than flying these walk snail rigs. I am slowly realizing what um, that the additional latency of all digital systems, in this case walk snail, um, on these tiny whoops really does legitimately make them harder to fly, which is a is gives hd0 sort of the nod but not that big because like the hd0 camera that's super low latency is kind of heavy right it's a full a full case camera the the really really lightweight hd0 camera um is not 90 frames a second i don't even know if it's 60 frames a second but yeah it's it's gonna be um it's not gonna be that crazy 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 low latency uh, you guys in chat are are geniuses when it comes to HD zero. The the tiny whoop HD zero setup. What is the latency of that? Anybody know offhand? Um, and then uh, we know that the walk snail latency is about thirty milliseconds. Um, so yeah, you know, for for a digital freestyle. I have a feeling that the HD zero latency is going to be significantly lower. Um, and that sucks because what that means is <clears throat> that if you want a digital freestyle tiny whoop, you should build it with HD zero. And then if you want a digital more cinematic ish tiny whoop, you should build it on walk snail. I hate like, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm sure it's a good thing that we have more choices, right? But <sighs> this whole like having to spend four five hundred dollars on a set of goggles for HD zero, another four five hundred dollars on a set of walk snail goggles, another three hundred dollars on a set of analog goggles, another four hundred and fifty dollars on O three goggles. This is some bullshit. This is some utter bullshit. And <clears throat> I really just want to be able to go, walk snail, that's the answer. Throw everything else away and just build everything on walk snail like the days of analog. Maybe this is just me being a fucking fossil. Um, and I'm just so spoiled from the days of analog where there were, it was just this it was you know the conversation was like oh a new vtx came out and it works a little bit better a new camera came out and it's it's a little bit better in low light it was so much simpler and and just less expensive um you know i've always said that fpv is one of the cheapest hobbies i've ever been into um but but you could but you can it, it can become expensive jesus that has just like ratcheted up a whole other uh, yeah, it, that's like, it still does not have to be expensive, but it can be way more expensive than it ever has been. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, Gray Hat says, if nobody, ever, if nobody else wants it, I'll build the UV yellow rig. Um, uh, <clears throat> if you're going to build it, let me know. If, if you're actually going to do the build, um, 
yeah, I'm sure that someone will message me. What was that? Was there a little weird thing in the bottom corner here? What the hell was that? Uh, uh, loads of people rewatch these streams, so I'll probably get a message in a couple days from now. If you really want to do it, Gray Hat, um, it's yours. But if you're just kind of on the fence and you're like, well, if nobody else wants to, um, then uh, let me give it a couple days, see if anybody is like dead. Anybody. Uh, what, I, what I would love is for somebody to go, oh my God, that, that color yellow is my favorite, or just yellow is my favorite color. Um, yeah, and then they can knock it out. If yellow is your favorite color, it's all yours. Uh, but yeah, let me know. Bob Bruce says, uh, I agree. The only main problem I have with the crown frame is the way the ducks distort. Uh, and is a pain when you when you put new props on. Um, yeah, th that me too. Th that that's kind of exactly where I'm at. You know, the the crown frame is a close second place to the cockroach frame, mainly because of that. Like that is the main reason that the because I, I believe the crown frame is ever so slightly lighter. Um, so I would rather run the lighter frame, even if it's just slightly lighter. Um, but yeah, having to having to um, bend the 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 ducts back straight uh, it gets old it gets old fast and and like and it gets worse and worse and worse and then uh, i have had one of them let go on me so uh the cockroach frame having a, a little bit of like three dimensionality to the to the duct around the outside there's like this little bend in it makes it so much stronger um and yeah that's kind of the main reason that that it's become my favorite uh simon says had a tiny whoop short Circular polarized antenna not working. Went back to linear, but loved the antenna inside the canopy. Uh, so cut the whip as short as possible. Works better than OG and lighter. Fun discovery. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, you can direct solder antennas. Um, it's not easy, but it's totally doable. Uh, I've done it on stream before. There are other, uh, there's other YouTube comment. Like, just type, like, search for, like, direct solder UFL or direct solder antenna and you'll find it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's totally doable. If you do it, do yourself a favor and put a big glob of E6000 over that, uh, over the, over your work when you're done, because it's not strong. It looks like it would be strong because you're going to solder the grounds on the left and right. And then the signal in the middle and just looking at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's strong, but it will, it will wiggle free and it will pop off. So do a big glob of E6000 on top of the whole thing. E6000 is cool because you can pick it off with your fingernail and it all comes off in one heap, just like hot glue. I guess you could also do it with hot glue. Um, I would I would do E6000 though. I keep, what what's happening down here? Is, the, is it, is this camera glitching out? I keep seeing something out of the corner of my eye. Uh, Cole Powers says we've been found out. Brains Make Bean says it's designed for 03. Very cool, but uh, we'll take anything. It's going to be about 275 grams dry, so not ultralight. I just saw it again. There it is. It's blinking. It's this camera, isn't it? This camera is uh, is on its way out. That's super annoying. What the hell? I can't possibly buy another one of these cameras. That would be the worst way to spend money. Oh, what's the Logitech app doing? It's all jacked up. Don't allow. Uh, yeah, wow, it's it's getting really bad. The Logitech app is screwing up though. Maybe that's maybe that's what's happening. Priority frame rate, priority exposure. Weird, very weird. Let me quit the Logitech app. See if that changes anything. Let me know if it does it again, shadows. Uh, YouTube just did the thing, trying to find my place. Denzel the Terrible says, uh, it's also Superb Owl Sunday. Lots might be drinking beer and watching commercials. No, nobody that hangs out in these live streams is watching the sports ball. That's not true. I'm sure someone else. Uh, Peter Clark says, I was surprised not to see you on YouTube. Uh, I arrived via the Patreon link. Yeah, wild. We're, we're all the way up to 70 people. So, well, here, you can see it. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, so here it is. So this is uh, this is what happens when the stream is unlisted. And this is just people coming from Patreon, which is an email, um, Facebook, 
and Discord notifications. And then as soon as I made the stream uh, public, it went 25, 36, 37, 47, and to the moon! Wild, man, wild how many people just come to these streams through YouTube. Um, those of you that come through YouTube, do you just type youtube.com into your URL bar? Is that is that what you do? That's crazy. What a funny little accidental experiment to do. Uh, I'm way behind on chat. Okay, hold on. Let's uh, let me focus here. Bob Bruce says, I found it on my TV, but was a pain and was wondering why I was watching you on my phone and couldn't find the stream on YouTube. Adam Weston says, I'm always in YouTube, not uh, not so much the events in Discord or Patreon. Happy to help. CMYK says, oh, snap, what's up? Uh, Steven Woodruff says, is the run cam thumb worth it when the pro version exists? I think that the pro version is significantly better. Uh, don't quote me on that because I haven't looked up run cam thumb stuff in a while, but I'm pretty sure that the pro version is like way, way, way better. Um, and I think it's only like 10 bucks more or something like that. Um, do a little bit of research though on YouTube. I'm sure someone has a video on here comparing the regular run cam thumb to the pro. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you're going to find the pro is the way to go. Simon says, uh, could always use an OSD stick overlay easier. I wish, man, the, the OSD stick overlay is very delayed, which makes it kind of pointless. If you're doing like long range stuff where you're not moving the throttle very much, it's, it's fine. Uh, but for any kind of freestyle th flying, you can like, you can, you can like blip the throttle and the OSD stick overlay won't even show anything. Like the refresh time is so slow that you can like outrun it. Um, so it's kind of worthless, unfortunately. Um, Gray Hat says, uh, would be fine with a stick cam from an offline recording. Yeah, I mean, that's never going to happen. I, I never do stick cams when I fly outside. The whole like chest rig with GoPro thing is just, I, I just can't do it. It's just, it's just silly. I, I also kind of, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a stick cam kind of guy. Um, Gray Hat says, uh, HD0 for the win on latency. All current HD0 cameras do at least 60 frames per second. Okay. So who, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody knows. CMYK says 69 milliseconds. I think he's just kidding. Um, so who knows the, the HD0 latency on 60 frames per second? Anybody? CMYK says, do you know if the end stat screen elements can be edited from the OSD menu like OSD elements? Uh, I don't think so. I think you can just turn them on or off. Uh, Gray Hat says, and the latency is still comparable to analog. Uh, Gray Hat also says, walk snail onboard recording on the light cam is great. And all you need is HD zero goggles plus walk snail, walk snail VRX. Uh, Northern Tier says, screw it, staying analog after the big HD zero disappointment. What's the big HD zero disappointment? I, I don't think I've heard about that. CMYK says, uh, yeah, Denzel is a terrible, but I need to edit post-flight stats in the field for old rigs. Intr oh, you're talking about in the in the menu. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think you can do that. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. If you can do that, though, let me know. CH3FPV says 2024. Uh, what, what, uh, um, so CMYK probably has rigs with either usb ports broken off or some reason for some reason he can't get these this happens every once in a while you'll get you'll have a rig that you can't get it to connect to beta flight ever again and so your um right stick forward left stick left osd has everything that you can ever do again and uh so the question is can you change the post flight stats in that in quad osd and i believe the answer is no um degal pup says if fpv was one of the cheaper hobbies for you then what the hell were your other hobbies um music motorsport airsoft airsoft is about comparable 
to, to FPV in terms of, no, it's not. Oh, Airsoft is way more expensive. Um, uh, photography, videography, kind of. Uh, but yeah, motorsport, <clears throat> motorsport is a hobby that will forever change your worldview on how expensive hobbies can be. Um, and there are hobbies that are way more expensive than motorsport. But yeah, if, if you're into motorsport for a bunch of years, you're, yeah, every other hobby you have after that, you'll be like, this is cheap. <laughs> um, there's a one of my favorite sayings in in motorsport is, um, "Hey, you want to know how to make a million dollars in motorsport? Start with two. Uh, it it really is true. Like trying to make money in in uh, in <laughs> car racing is absurd. Uh, where are we at in Chad here? I want to know what the big HD zero disappointment is. Is it just that the goggles are starting to like be weird? They've been having all kinds of weird issues with their goggles. CH3 FPV says 2024 new Mobula six happy model homepage. Click on whoops. And then on the right, uh, there's one on the way. Apparently I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited, but terrified. It, it looks like the AIO that they've chosen for it doesn't have motor plugs and um, there was something else that, that I was very sad about, but the, it doesn't look like it has motor plugs, which is just the silliest thing I've ever heard. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably be super disappointed, but we'll see. Oh, 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 the other thing is it's a BMI 270 gyro, which is my least favorite gyro. Um, so yeah, I, I have a terrible feeling that the new Mobula 6 AIO, uh, might not be as good as the current one. Greyhead says, uh, I'll build it. It's a site. I just wanted to give someone else a shot to get something to LOL. Yeah. We'll give people like a day. Maybe see uh, for anybody that came in late. Uh, I've got this day glow yellow, uh, we bleed frame up for grabs. You pay shipping and I'll send it to you. Um, you have to do the build and yellow has to be like your favorite color. Um, and then, uh, and one of the cool things about this yellow is it's fluorescent enough that UV LEDs make it light up crazy bright. And, uh, I'm also going to send you this really cool tiny whoop, um, uh, direct solder this directly up to your battery leads. It's four obscenely small ultraviolet purple LED chips on here. So this'll, this'll kick out plenty of UV light that'll light this frame up like crazy. What most people do is they run these. Uh, they run them like around the ducts and they'll put them like on the front of the duct. Um, but that's on you, you know, you, you set it up however you want, but yeah, if yellow is like your favorite color and you're going to do this build sooner than later, uh, basically for the price of shipping, but do me a favor and buy like a thing or two for my Etsy store and I'll ship it all to you at once. If not, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, if your favorite color is orange, I got this shiny new we bleed frame that they sent me for nothing. So I, I want to pass it on. Uh, Matty O says flickering cam. Has, has it gotten any better? Uh, gray hat has a hummingbird with a VTX. that's broadcasting in the wrong frequencies. I set it to R8 and it ends up, uh, sending on L7 tested with multiple goggles. That is probably a VTX table issue. One of the awesome things about newbie drone is that you can send them an email and say, Hey, some, this weird thing is happening. How do I fix it? And they'll send you an email back that says, here's how you fix it. Um, it's crazy. We don't get that kind of customer service from many places in FPV. So do it. Send them a message. They'll get you straightened out. Sounds like a VTX table problem to me though. CMYK says my V3 cockroach is doing the same bending as the crown, both, uh, both as what? Both as way durable. What? Uh, Matty ORC says, Oh, we got that. Uh, Simon, YouTube did the thing. Man, YouTube is bad today. Simon says, I suspect other frame makers will start to copy NB, uh, newbie drone curve ducts. I'll never go back. Constant round ducts win over any small issues with the rest of the frame. Love them. Um, I would love that. I, I really would. I would love if, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just a really big fan of companies 
improving their products and, and learning from each other, right? Like, we, we don't have... It's not stealing to do that, right? Like, if the next Meteor 65 frame has the same curved sort of duct as the newbie joint, that's not stealing. That's just learning from other people and then making small improvements. Stealing would be them taking the frame, 3D modeling it exactly, and just making it, right? Um, there's a big difference between stealing and iterating and, you know, learning something from your competitor and then using it, a similar version of it or sometimes the same sort of geometry or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that within reason. I mean, there's times where it becomes a little, yeah, there's gray areas, but uh brad bonden says youtube app sends notifications as soon as you post it ah okay that makes sense blizzard fpv said i didn't think of that uh, blizzard fpv says mine switched to cid fpv automatically what for Pulex says there was youtube notification when you listed the video okay freely just says uh thumb pro is 4k the regular thumb is 1080p. Oh, yeah, definitely go with the thumb pro then. All facts has found my stream through only prop fans. Uh, YouTube did the thing again. Brutal, brutal. Ch leave the fucking chat where I left it. Please. CMYK uh, put in the CIDFPV.com link in the chat. This is my full-time job. If you like these live streams and would like to see them continue, head on over to CIDFPV.com. There's a million ways you can support me. Some of them are free, like using the affiliate links before you check out on a whole bunch of different websites. Um, and then some of them, you got to send me a couple bucks. Whatever you want to do, that's cool. Uh, Patreon helps me out the most. They take the least cut uh, and you get the most benefit. Uh... There's also a Fiverr page where you can work one-on-one -on -one with me. We'll do a half an hour, hour-long session. You'll come out of that session with many, many, many months worth of information that you would have had to dig through bad information on Facebook to find or YouTube. Um, there is an Etsy store and a, 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 a Teespring shop where you can get apparel, stickers, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Help this thing keep on rolling. By, by this being my full-time gig... I can devote 40, 45, 50 hours a week to FPV. Um, and I've been doing that for a while, and that's why the, these streams are so kind of good. Uh, if it becomes a part-time thing again, yeah, I'll only be able to put 10, 15 hours a week into it. So you guys have allowed this live stream to, to become much better than it ever could have, and that's pretty cool. Uh, Free Lojo with the Patreon link. Thank you. Gray Hat says, HD0 claims one millisecond more latency than analog at 60 frames per second and five milliseconds less than analog at 90 frames per second. That's kind of a silly... That's silly for them to say that. That's a silly claim because analog latency is all over the place. It depends on uh, primarily what camera you use. There, there are analog cameras that'll have like 30-some milliseconds of latency. There are other analog cameras that have couple of milliseconds of latency. So that's a weird, that's a weird thing for HD zero to say. Um, walks now could make those same claims. They could say, Christ walks now could say, Hey, we've got three milliseconds less latency than analog. If you're using one of the analog cameras, it's 33 milliseconds latency. VPro says, uh, you also have Betaflight Lua script for Edge TX with broken USB. Ooh, good call. Yeah, that wouldn't help with the OSD, but yeah, good call. I forget about Lua scripts. They're too scripty for me. Blizzard FPV says, snorting yachts is, is way too expensive. <laughs> snorting? Do you snort them? Oh, man. The, uh, my, uh, Blisters are starting to pop from digging that 50 foot long <laughs> tunnel for the four inch corrugated pipe. This is going to hurt. Uh, anybody else use their, anybody else use their uh, flush cutters for trimming their nails and dead skin? Is that just me? That's just me. All right, that's fine. I'm okay with it. 
Uh, CH3FPV says new Mobula 6 is out. New frame, new race canopy, 702 28,000s, Super X AIO ELRS, 25 to 400 uh, milliwatt VTX. Mark Bleat has hands on. Who's Mark Bleat? Is that someone who I should know who they are? And I don't. Uh, Mobula 6 2024. Uh, so Nick Burns did the original kind of review, but that was a while ago. Um, look at off axis coming up second. That's what I like to see, man. That's what I like to see. Gangly gangers coming up high in the search results. That's important. Um, Mark Bleat. Where's Mark Bleat? Was that a typo? Hold on. B L E I T. B L E I T. Mark B L E I T. B L A I T. I should put FPV after this. Mark Bleat. Is it Mark Baker? No, 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 no. Uh, no. It's not Mark Baker. What's Mark Bleat? What does that mean? Uh, Limits20 says I broke three 1S HD0 VTXs. They're still working, though. What? Uh, oh, but range went from uh, a 10 to a 2 on the scale from 1 to 10. Just broke another one today. Uh, I've been very concerned with... Um, the durability of all of these digital systems um, when it comes to tiny whoops, because we're getting them really hot. Um, they're like sitting up on top with like grommets and a little bullshit M1.2 screw going through them. Um, is that the big, somebody earlier mentioned big disappointment in terms of HD zero. Is this the big disappointment is, is, are the HD zero lightweight VTXs impossibly fragile? Uh, Jesus, three of them. That's nasty limits. Uh, is this like a known thing? Are the, are the HD zero, uh, tiny whoop, super lightweight VTXs really, really fragile? Let me know. Um, I, I've, I, I've been super worried about these walk snail, uh, one S light VTXs and cameras but they, they, I, I, I mean, at this point, like I've crashed them hard, a couple of them, really hard, a bunch of times, and they're completely fine. Uh, if that's a real thing, if the HD zero lightweight VTXs are fragile, that is a deal breaker for me, at least. Uh, off axis says mine, that yellow frame. Take my money. Um, shoot me a message, and it's all yours. If it, you're, you're typing in all. Gray hat wasn't typing in all capitals. You're typing in all capitals off axis. So I, I think yellow might be your, your favorite color. Message me. It's all yours. You got to do the build quick though. We, we, we need to see pictures of the build, uh, within two weeks, two weeks is the time frame. I don't know. Uh, Troy Prelog says, uh, new M65 is soldered camera as well. Uh, I think it's more for racers over freestyle. Uh, I, I, uh, are you saying that the camera is soldered to the board? Hold on. Hold on. If the camera and the motors are soldered to this board, I quit. There's an Eco version, Mob 6 Eco 2024. Oh, look at what what's happening here. This is for an HD one. Uh Mobula 6 Eco 2024 1S 65 mm ultralight micro HD whoop. Okay. So this is not 
what we're interested in. We're not interested in the HD whoop. Is this the regular one? This is the regular one. All right, so th this is what kind of tipped me off. So apparently this is the instruction manual for the new Happy Model Mobula 6 2024. 1S, ultralight. All right, so this is the instruction manual. And this is what tipped me off to no, no motor plugs whatsoever. And what I think we've also just learned thanks to uh, Troy Prelog. And I am confirming right now, yep, is that there's no plug for the camera. So the camera will need to be direct soldered as well. Obviously it will come with a camera direct soldered and it will come with motors direct soldered. But uh, this is not the way. This is not the way for us, for me. This is not the way for me. Th this makes my ability to test things so much more annoying and, and difficult um, for not much of a benefit, right? Like these, these the, the connector for the camera didn't weigh anything significant. Um, it didn't come unplugged. There were no issues with it. There were no problems with it. Um, the camera thing, I'm, I'm nowhere near as annoyed as the motor thing. Um, forcing people to direct solder tiny whoop motors is dumb. That's it, it, very, very, very dumb. That is a, a, a bad decision. That is a, a stupid, stupid decision. Uh... Man, that is, that is dumb. That is dumb. That's a shame. That really is. Uh, I guess the argument here would be that we had to solder anyway because BT 2.0. Um, but, you know, Happy Model could have made, Happy Model could have made the exact same AIO and pre-soldered on an A30 connector and they could have absolutely owned as if they already didn't. I mean, they already did, but they could have picked up even more of the uh, Tiny Whoop crowd with a solderless BT 2.0 A30 Easily motor swappable. Go, put these same motors on 0702, 28,000 or 27,000. Great. Awesome. Put those on. But then you can just plug it. You know what I mean? Like they could have made something really, really good. Uh, but they didn't. Maybe they'll come out with a freestyle Mobula 6. Maybe, maybe this is their race Mobula 6. Uh, I doubt it though because... Uh, nobody runs the the Happy Model VTXs because they uh, transmit. Uh, they don't. When you put them on 25 millimot, milliwatts, they transmit like 50, 60, and they bleed over into other channels. Um, so most of the Tiny Whoop races do not allow um, Happy Model VTXs or Happy Model AIOs that have the VTXs built in, right? Because that's the same thing. Um, yeah, this is a shame. Happy Model could have could have really improved uh they could have taken the the best AIO and and improved it significantly and and made something that made everybody's lives easier but instead God, I don't even know, know what the hell this is the, the direct solder motors weird shape it looks like the shape of the super B AIO which was a nightmare the super Bs were a disaster um so hopefully it's not just a super B AIO uh, yeah, that stinks. Uh, dig out pups. Uh, uh, so there's a couple people. All right, so off axis was first on calling the yellow frame off axis. If for some reason you don't want it, 
Uh, it looks like Degal Pup. Well, here's the thing. Degal Pup said I'm more than willing to take it, but then off axis that. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah, it's off axis again. Saying all capitals, yell off, off axis. He gets it. He's the only one typing in all capitals. That shows. Uh, that shows desperation. Peter Clark says I've seen a few people with the new Mobula Six. Uh, do you have one yet? Yeah, I do not. Uh, looks like everything is direct soldered, including the camera. Uh, that's a shame. That's a mistake, in my opinion. Um, well, I will say this. Uh, that makes the Hummingbird... The new Mobula 6 basically just became the option for people that have been into FPV for long enough to really get good at soldering. Um, so for hardcore FPV people, the new Mobula 6 works. It's a pain in the ass for no reason. It's stupid that just because you've gotten good at soldering, you're going to have to waste your time direct soldering motors. And then when you crash the rig hard and you bend one of the motor shafts, you're not going to want to replace that motor because you're going to have to tear it all down and deal with the, this stupidly small soldering. That's my big problem with the with the soldered on tiny whoop motors is that we break these, we bend these motor shafts, um, and then yeah, it just sucks. And so what ends up happening is you bend the motor shaft a little bit, and you're like, well, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to deal with soldering really small again, so I'll just keep running it with a bent motor shaft, and you just keep running and running and running it. Whereas with the motor plugs, you just snag an extra set of motors next time you're doing an order from Tiny Whoop and swap them in. And you have a rig that flies good, you know, with direct soldered Tiny Whoop motors. Your rigs fly like shit because you don't feel like direct soldering the motors again and 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 again because it's annoying. It's small and stupid. Um, so yeah. Uh 16 bit says what's up. Northern Tier says, I guess I need to try HD0 on something other than a Mobula 6 that sucked, underpowered, short flight time. Uh, I did buy one of the new VTXs going to put in a grinder, you know. Um HD tiny whoop builds are really difficult northern tier uh the uh my 65 millimeter build was fairly simple um i put the the lightest weight 702 uh highest kv motor available on it and that was it and and it, it is what it is and, it, and it's it's decent it's nothing like the analog rigs but um yeah this is way better than i thought that it was going to be uh, I can't wait to get it off this um, Happy Model Cross AIO. This thing sucks. Uh, but this thing is really decent. Um, on the 75 millimeter rigs, I've been having a way harder time. Partially because there are more motor options. On the 65 millimeter Walk Snail Freestyle build, there is the, the 0702 36,000 kV motor. That's it. Like, that's the one. There, there's not another motor that's as light that will make as much power with the 75 millimeter rigs we're all over the damn place like we've got the the meteor 75 pro build on the 45 millimeter big ass props on 1002s they make good power but then it's heavier um we've got 603s we've got 802s right it's just it, there's more options on the 75 so i have made it more difficult um so yeah there's that Veritas Uza says, what breed is your dog? My fiance loves it. Uh, he is a mini schnauzer, but he's got like poodle hair, uh, so he doesn't shed. Uh, but yeah, he looks and acts just like a, a mini schnauzer, which is hysterical. Speak of the devil. Come here, you little shit. Teddy, come here. Teddy Spaghetti. Teddy. Teddy Spaghetti, get over here. I tried. <laughs> he, I, I can hear him. He's at the top of the stairs. I don't know what his, what his deal is. As soon as I start flying, he'll be all over the place. Uh, six X one FPV is in the house. He says, "My question is, how does CID FPV not have the new Mobula Six 2024? Uh, all these other pilots got them, and he didn't. Yeah, uh, people don't send me stuff. I don't blame them. I'm I'm harsh on products. I I fly them hard, and I talk shit about them." So it, it makes sense. Um, it's a shame. It's it's a shame that, um, that yeah, 
the 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 folks that don't criticize products i mean it makes sense though it's it's obvious right uh but yeah it's a shame that the folks that don't criticize products that just say that every single new product is the best thing on earth they're the ones that that get them um although there are certainly people like nick burns that don't do that that get stuff really early but you know nick has a much bigger channel much bigger audience um so yeah it makes sense this is a fairly small channel um with of that my whole thing is that like i i and I, this is on purpose like i don't chase subscribers i don't chase the things that you're supposed to chase um and so this doesn't look like a big channel but what's what's wild is that the engagement in this channel and and the watch hours are like way higher than anything else watch hours of course because it's live stream but still you know it it's it, it's the the folks that hang out here are way more dedicated and, and they're way you know so it's, we got a pretty unique crowd so from the outside uh it makes sense why companies are like yeah we're not gonna send it to that guy with eight thousand subscribers what is this uh, what's this guy doing? Uh, but what's interesting is that, uh, when we, when we talk about a rig, I know for a fact that loads of you guys will, when, when I finally find something that's good, um, loads of you, uh, show up and, and get it and use my affiliate links and, and all that good stuff. So, and, and I'll bet you that, you know, uh, a, a channel with twice as many subscribers, but they're not as, as hardcore, um, yeah, they won't get that. I like it like this. I, I don't want tons and tons and tons of people because tons and tons of people means tons and tons of assholes. Um, I would rather have uh, a much smaller number of people that aren't garbage. So. Uh, CH3 says, sorry, typo. Uh, marble kit FPV. Ah, okay. Marble kit. I don't even remember what we were looking at. Uh, what we were talking about. I know we were talking about the new uh, Mavio 6. Ah, yeah, Albert Kim. Right. Yeah, he gets everything. He gets everything absolutely brand new. Um, he, 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 yeah, he's notorious for just pushing reviews out. Like the, the day that anything comes in, um, you know, he's commonly the very first person to, to, to get content out surrounding ab absolutely every single product. Um, unfortunately, most of his content that he puts out doesn't really have any actual information. It's just, here's a new thing that just showed up. Here's what it says on the box. Uh, here's me flying it around. Uh, you don't really get any, uh, any actual um, data that you can't sort of read off of a, off of a website. Um, but it is, it is valuable because he'll hold it and, and you know, you can like look at stuff on it. Um, so it has its value, but it, it's a shame that, um, yeah, it's a shame that we don't get more. Wait, no, hold on. Why does he only have a thousand subscribers? Yeah, no, this is him. I can tell by his voice. Why does he only have a 1.08 K 1.08 K is a thousand. Why? How does he only have a thousand? Did his, did his other channel get, killed or something weird so his main channel has ass loads of subscribers here but then he's got this marble kit channel here apparently what what's he doing is this just his second uh i got you this is my second channel focusing on just fpv related topics he's a he's a cool guy that has a second channel i see uh interesting look at this frame that's a it's a totally different frame design that's kind of cool looks like we got another frame to test i like that uh this camera mount looks awful but it might work fine it looks ridiculous though uh yeah everything's soldered on that's a nightmare uh, i don't know what is, there's a little tiny antenna i'm guessing that's for elrs we're used to that by now. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty sad about the AIO. 
I really cannot believe that they're expecting people to direct solder motors. That's that's a, a big mistake. But it, the, 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 like this is why people ready. You're about to see why people don't send me anything. Ready? Because I say things like this. Chances are the AIO is going to suck anyway. Uh, Happy Model has more AIOs that are not good than AIOs that are good. So chances are this new AIO is not going to be good. I hope it is. I really do. I really do hope that it is. I hope everything is good. You know, I, I, I don't want bad products to exist for us. That sucks. It's annoying. Um, but yeah, chances are it won't be good, especially because it looks a lot like the Super B and the Super B was a disaster. Um, so yeah, hopefully they figured out what was wrong with the Super B and this is an awesome AIO. And the worst thing about this AIO is that you have to direct solder motors and the camera. Um, those two things are pretty bad. <laughs> those two things are, are pretty shitty. And I really wish that, um, uh, we could still get, maybe we can, maybe they haven't fully discontinued the old Mobula 6 ELRS. Look, it kind of feels like they have, um, but yeah. Uh, that reminds me. That doesn't remind me. That makes me think that uh, maybe, I, I think I might actually have uh, contact over it. I know I have a contact over at Heavy Model. I'm going to ask him, hey, uh, just noticed that the new Mobula 6 AIO doesn't have camera plugs. Um, any chance of getting the old AIO? Which is better. <laughs> I don't know how to say which is better without sounding like a dick, but uh, I think I do have... Uh, a Facebook message from somebody over at Happy Model. Um, I just have to find it, which unfortunately is very difficult. Uh, who knows the uh, the guy's name over at Happy Model? Is it? Maybe I can just search. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. Uh, I don't think it was on Facebook Messenger. It might have been somewhere else. Damn it. Uh, yeah, I got to try to find that because I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him. Uh, yeah, because I'm I'm. This is silly. This is silly. Six six one says it's not. Uh, it's really not uh, that hard to solder. Uh, not a big deal at all. Um, I disagree. I, I really do. I really do disagree. Um, I think that there are those of us that have spent that have soldered thousands of wires. And for us, sure, it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, but it shouldn't exist. The, 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 the weight savings is not significant enough. And the amount of work that's required because you can't do it while it's in the frame, so you gotta pull it all out. It's just stupid. It's just, it's, it's just a bad idea and it's stupid. And there's a chance that you can get, the, look, these boards are extremely fragile as it is. So why do we want to go dumping a bunch of heat into them more than we need to? Um, and again, the, the the biggest problem is the psychological aspect of it, where if you've got a rig where in one second you can unplug and plug in a new motor, you are always going to run that rig cleaner than a rig that you have to direct solder 30 gauge motor wires. It's just it's just a psychological thing that's going to happen, and Tiny Whoop motors are like eight or nine dollars each. You you'll you'll have extras typically, and like oh I bang this one up, done, unscrew it, unplug it, swap it, good to go, no big deal. Your rig is now clean again. Versus, uh, I'm gonna have to turn the soldering iron on, I have to get flux out, I'm gonna have to do this, I'm gonna do that. No, it's fine, just run it. You know, like that that's my main gripe. No matter how good or bad you are at soldering, if the option is either unplugging and plugging a fresh motor in versus soldering, versus clipping the leads off, stripping back the wire, tinning the wires, 
and soldering it down, come on, right? Like you're just, you're gonna be so much less likely to, to swap that out. Uh, not to mention that if you're out somewhere flying or if you're at a race, do you really want to be sitting there fucking soldering a fresh motor at a, at a, at a, uh, at a, you know, trying to strip and solder and tin, uh, a motor at a, at a fucking brewery at a table? No, like you don't want to be doing it. And like, that's not how you should be spending your time. You should be spending your time having fun with people flying, racing, doing all the good things. And yeah, three screws, unplug replug three more screws that's that's a big deal um in my opinion but again as always who am i right uh michael kajas says for new mobula 6 check uh infinity loop sneak peek new happy model mobula 6 2024 uh simon says even the battery pads are on opposite sides oh that stinks are they really that's stupid. That's how uh, Happy Model did the cross AIO, and I do not like that. I do not like one battery either side of the um, USB port. Just kind of a personal thing, but um, yeah, I don't love that. That's not in any way, shape, or form a deal breaker, though. Northern Tier says, wonder if they're going to stop making the AIO uh, we are using now. I believe that they already have, because it is not in stock anywhere. The only way you can get it right now is to buy an entire Mobula 6 ELRS. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure they've already, um, uh, they've already discontinued it, which blows, uh, off axis says, and, and, and the, the whole direct soldering motors thing is a complete deal breaker for anybody that's new. Anybody that's new has a hard time soldering 16 gauge leads, let alone fucking 30 gauge. Like it just, and, and Tiny Whoop is such a beautiful way to get new people into the hobby. And, and it's just, this is just such a missed opportunity, man. And like the Mobula 6 has always been like one of the, if not the best starter rigs ever. So like, why, why do this? Why take like this incredible, like, the Mobula 6 ELRS is everything. It is so good. And like for them to make it worse, it just, it just bugs the shit out of me. Maybe they've got a version of it planned with plugs. I sincerely hope so. Um, but I doubt it because they're just, they're not calling this like the race edition or anything. They're just calling this Mobula 6 2024. Um, and, you know, yet again, racers get all the attention and the love, right? It, it really, it feels like they've, they're making this more for racers and that kind of makes sense because there are way more racers than, than freestyle folks. But yeah, it just sucks for us that aren't, you know, super hardcore racers. And I, I do think it is it, it, because of that, it is a worse product. I do think the lack of motor plugs straight up, even if there are other improvements, which I don't think there will be because what else are you going to improve? The gyro is worse. Um, yeah. Ah, missed opportunities uh, drive me crazy. Uh, off axis says you could have made the solder pads through holes in them so that you could put a plug for the motors too. Yep. Yep. Just like newbie drones done. Just like flywoo is done. Just like, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that they didn't do that because they didn't have the space. They, they chose to shrink the AIO down, um, so that it'll work with the bigger silly frames that you don't want to use anyway. Um, It's hard to make products. Hard to make products that make everybody happy. It's impossible to make products that make everybody happy. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, off axis. Yeah, I have not sent the batteries yet. <laughs> I have not. All right, cool. Yeah, these are good batteries. <laughs> Sorry, dude. But I'm glad. Sorry, but I'm glad. It was perfect. Uh, Simon says they didn't even put pinholes to allow you to pop your own plugs on their set. Yeah, that, that's. I didn't. I had that same thought, and I was like, no, nah, I didn't say anything because there's a chance that they. Sp and I don't think this is the case, but there is a chance that those. Uh, those crenellations, I think they're called, or those pockets that they put on the outside of the frame, 
maybe those are spaced properly for a plug to go in there. And so maybe we can take a plug and, and I, this is, and I just shut my mouth cause I, I, eventually I'll get my hands on one and I'll try it. Um, so maybe it's fine, but putting the plugs in those little pockets on the side is kind of janky, like put holes behind those pockets so that we can put the plug in there. But I'll bet you the problem is that they, they used all the board space. They, they put components all the way up to the edge. Um, and the, the plugs are big. The plugs do take up a chunk of space on the board for sure. But I would 100% rather have a bigger board with the plugs on it, right? Um, because the, the Meteor 65 Pro frame, it's not, it, it doesn't really have any benefits that I've been able to find. So let's not make our, let's not, you know, sacrifice all these things to make it work with a frame that doesn't really make much sense or have a good prop selection, right? Brad Bonden says, maybe Jesse will start making motors uh, with plugs at the motor. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I guess... I guess we could just start doing what I did with the newbie drone plugs and, and make little basically adapters. Um, we get, uh, you can find, so the, the motor plug, I don't know if it's actually the male or female end, but let's just call the, the motor plug on tiny whoop motors, the male end. You can buy the female ends, um, of that plug with wires coming out of them. Uh, I've yet to find them with silicone coated wires coming out of them. I've only found them with PVC coated wires, which sucks. But if we can find those uh, female plugs with silicone wires coming out of them, we can just cut that really short and then solder those to the direct solder pads on the AIO. Um, and then we've got our plugs back. Uh, and yeah. You only have to do that pain in the ass 30 gauge soldering one time. So first person to find those plugs with silicone wires wins. Uh, Frank Nicholas says all schnauzers do not shed. Uh, they have hair versus fur. I did not realize that. I didn't know schnauzers had the poodle hair. That makes sense. We were wondering uh, how we got two schnauzers. In well, Duke uh, was a, um, he was a schnauzer poo, whatever the hell they're called. He was half schnauzer, half poodle. Um, but we were like, how did we get two of these schnauzers in a row that have poodle hair? Uh, it would make sense that schnauzers just have poodle hair. Uh, Frank Douglas says, uh, that's why you have to get their hair trimmed. Yeah, it does. Get, it turns into dreadlocks. That's, that's why he has such a bad haircut right now. Uh... Frank, uh, and we got that. Uh, Scott FPV says 802 30,000s on a 75 millimeter wax nail. Which prop should I use? Uh, by blades for sure. Uh, the the 30,000 KV is just too much for for tri blades. You got to do by blades with that. Uh, Damon says, have you spoken to Happy Model and shown your engagement and viewer base? Uh, maybe you could make a case about your views being hardcore uh, kind that will really give great feedback. Um, I have not. I, I have not talked to. Uh, happy model at length. I, I just assumed that they weren't interested. Uh, they did reach out to me about the new, uh, about the new uh, tiny whoop though. And I said, yeah, I would love to test one. Uh, and, and I haven't heard back from them since. So I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to talk to them about the, 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 as soon as I figure out where I was talking to them previously, uh, I'm going to bend their ear about the, um, the old AIO and try to convince them to either keep making it or whatever. Cause I, I do genuinely think that they've stopped making it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully they can, they can make it. Christ call it like they're your beginner AIO. I don't care. They just don't, it's, it's the best AIO that has ever been made for tiny whoops. Like, ah, uh, come on, man. Come on. Gray hat says, uh, what makes an AIO good or bad besides failure rate? Eh, just the failure rate. Really? The, the failure rate is so bad on tiny whoop AIOs that everything else be damned. If you can manage to make an ELRS VTX built in tiny whoop AIO that doesn't, that, that holds up to any amount of abuse, it is instantly the best AIO that exists, especially now with the, with the old, we had it, we've had it. 
and it's looking like it's now gone, and that's making me angry. Gray Hat says, what's wrong with the Super B? It just fails. It's just fragile. It's blow up. Original Super B did have ESC issues, but I've heard from so many people that even with uh, 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 Blue Jay 0.16, um, they're still very fragile and they still let go. The Blue Jay 0.16 uh, uh, is a, you have to get that onto the Super B AIOs. Uh, without that, they have all kinds of problems, but even after you do that, they still have issues. Uh, Simon tagged me but didn't uh, say anything else. Maybe. Oh, no, here we go. Cut down antenna still has the UFL. Ah, okay, okay. How the hell did you do that? Did you solder it? Uh, Sugary OD says, do you know anything about the FX17B camera on the new Mobula 6? I do not. Lens looks huge, similar to the pinch cam. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't love that. The, the, those lenses are heavy. Uh, so I'm assuming that camera is kind of heavy. Uh, one of the cool things about the, the Runcam Nano 3 is that it's just stupidly lightweight. Um, and enclosed in this canopy, it's it's outrageously durable. This is the other thing about the new Mobula that I'm, I could totally be wrong about, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as durable. Th those G-string camera mounts uh, just don't tend to be durable. Uh, so yeah, it, it to me it really looks. They should have named this new Mobula Six the Mobula Six Race. Um, because they did all of the things that racers do to to lower the weight and increase the performance, and a lot of those things sacrifice durability. And for us flying freestyle, that is that sucks. That really does suck. It was it's been so nice to have a really durable tiny whoop that rips. Um, and I'm just like heartbroken that it's looking like we're not going to have that anymore. Gray Hat says uh, I don't know if you missed reading it. Uh, if so, disregard the number is HD zero. Yeah, this is what I need. Uh, 14.1 milliseconds at 90 frames per second, 19.7 milliseconds at 60 frames per second. Um, and then they're using 18.7 milliseconds for analog. That's, that's a little high. You can pretty easily build an analog system that's less than, uh, 18.7. But, uh, the number that matters there is 19.7, call it 20 milliseconds at 60 frames per second. Um, so... HD zero for a digital tiny whoop is going to give you 20 milliseconds latency. Uh, walk snail on a digital tiny whoop is going to give you 30 milliseconds latency. That's a big deal. 10 milliseconds is a big deal. Uh, interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's a big enough deal to offset how much worse HD zero is in, in a lot of different ways. It's better in a couple ways, mainly latency. Um, but I like walk snail a lot more than HD zero. Peter Clark says, uh, you're keeping it real going deep into the, uh, into the detail. I appreciate that approach. Most FPV review channels push any and every product, uh, as the next best thing. Yep. Yep, it drives me absolutely insane. Simon says, agreed, soldering motor is easy or not is a pain in the ass, and plugging is just easier. That whole board seems like a few to customers, yet some uh, yet some are happy model or listening to who? They're listening to the racers, 100%. 100%, they're listening to the racers. Racers are going to love the new uh, Mobula 6, I'll bet. And maybe, maybe it's the best racing Tiny Whoop ever. It very well could be. It's got a VTX built in, unlike the... Uh, unlike the beta FPV cross AIO. So if the VTX built in doesn't bleed over onto other channels and accurately outputs 25 milliwatts, it will be the, it, it'll be the choice for racers. And, you know, as with the rest of FPV, racers get all the love because there's way more of them and they have way more money and they have, you know, quad dads who build 20 identical rigs for their kid that's uh, an absolute ninja. Um, so yeah, that's just good business. We're the, we're the weirdos flying freestyle and that's okay. It's, it, it, you know, it, it's just, it just makes me sad. Uh, drone daddy says Albert Kim does call it the eco Mobula six. So there could be a regular Mobula six. Um, so, uh, uh, probably like an hour ago, we, we took a look at the two manuals that they have up for the Mobula six 2024s. Um, the eco Mobula six for whatever reason also is called the HD. It's called like the Eco Mobula 6 HD, and it's got uh, HD0 on it. 
uh, and then the regular Mobula 6 is analog. Very, very, very weird naming convention. Why would the Eco one be the more expensive one? But I don't know. Maybe something's getting lost in translation. Seawill says, have you tried an Analog 85 Pro with 1002s? Uh, I have not. Bought a frame and props uh, on my last order just to try. Honestly, kind of dig it for bashing around the backyard. Um, the 85 millimeter uh, setups, it's... First of all, I, I, I don't really do the, the whoops outside thing. For me, tiny whoops are for inside the house, uh, and then toothpicks are for outside the house. Um, I do understand that if you've got, if outside your house, you have a ton of little tiny gaps to shoot, at that point it does make sense to have a, a, a tiny whoop that's set up to fly outside. Um, for me, the, my Jungle Gym Basher is that rig. It's a Mobula 7 1S ELRS. Uh, with 802 27,000 kV motors on it, and it has all the power that I would ever want from a rig that I'm going to shoot tiny little gaps with. So for me, going another step bigger and more powerful doesn't really make any sense. It's it's going to make shooting those tiny little gaps more difficult, and it's not going to be, and it's not going to get it to the point of flight performance where a toothpick is. So for me, it's. Six, the, the right tools for the job, and this is me in, in this backyard, in this house, in whatever, right? The right tools for the job are 65 millimeter, 100% for indoor work. 65 is also really fun at the jungle gyms. But 75 millimeter is the main jungle gym rig, which also I can fly in front and out back and shoot tiny little gaps. And then if I want something bigger and more powerful than that, I go directly to like a two and a half inch or three inch toothpick. Um, there's, I, I don't need that step in between. Um, uh, I've tried 85 millimeter rigs. I've seen what they weigh. It just, it just gets too heavy. And the, at that two inch propeller size, the weight of the motors and the propellers and the battery that you're going to need, um, tend to make the, uh, the whole platform, like no longer all that durable, right? right Cause it's a plastic frame. Like there's a limit to how much weight you can pile on top of a plastic frame before you need to go to carbon fiber. Um, and I find that like two inch tends to be that spot. If you manage to build, I mean, 1002 is a pretty lightweight motor. So if you've got like a nice lightweight prop on there, nice lightweight canopy and AIO and nice lightweight battery, that would start to make sense to me. But for me, it's the 75s. The, the 75s are just so good. Um, that yeah that that's what i would have for outside but again i'm just one guy on the internet um if if you like the way that that 85 pro flies see well on on those 1002s yeah let her rip i will say though um you should if you haven't already you should build a uh a jungle gym basher a mobula 7 1s elrs 802 27,000 kv iGAO motors on the uh by blades on the gem fan by blades it's phenomenal it's so 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 good uh gray hat says don't forget fixed latency versus variable and lighter whoop vtx um yeah it's only a gram lighter which is not quite enough it was if it was two grams lighter the weight would be a significant thing but at one gram lighter for hc zero versus walk snail it's, it's not enough um fixed latency versus variable yeah that's a thing with tiny whoops though you're usually flying pretty close to yourself so I almost never see the latency move on walk snail from 30. It's just, it's, it's like locked at 30. So it's not really all that variable. The variable latency thing really becomes a big deal when you're like flying a five inch behind buildings and shit. Um, that's when, when that can really bite you in the ass. Um, so yeah. Uh, but two really good points. You're, you're dead on the money there. Michael uh, S. says, I've seen you recommend everyone use their own rates. How do you go about figuring out what rates will be best for their personal taste? Great question, Michael. Fantastic question. Um, the, I know this sounds like a, a dick answer, but just play around with them. Uh, just change them. Uh, that really is it. And, and like, there's a, myself included, right? The When, when I was new, there's an irrational fear of changing some things in beta flight and like messing your rig up or like not being able to get them back. Uh, so do this, whatever your rates are now, take a screenshot. It's only nine 
variables. It's only nine numbers, right? Take a quick screenshot and you'll now you'll always be able to get your rates back to where they were today. Sounds like you're not happy with them. So in, on one hand, who cares? But on the other hand, now you don't have to worry right now. You've um, uh, there's a, an acronym FUD, F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, doubt. Um, now that's taken care of. No matter what, you can get back to home base. That was not a nightmare, right? So now just start changing stuff and and try to change it one thing at a time. So do, this is what I always recommend. You go to, so you should be on actual rates. Definitely use actual rates. If you're still on the beta flight rates in the little drop down menu, um, the first change you want to make is switching from beta flight to actual. That is going to subtly change the, the rate profile. Fly it fly like 10, 15 batteries on it. Now come back in there and you're going to take your center, the, 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 all three numbers for your center rate. So in, in actual rates, you've got center max rotation expo, take all of your center numbers and increase them by 10 fly the rig, couple of batteries. Now increase them by another 10 fly the rig. Now drop them back down by 20 fly the rig, drop them down by 10, fly the rig. This exercise of here, here, no, I gotta do it backwards for you guys. Here, 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 all the way down to here, and then dropping down, this will give you, this should give you a broad enough range where you will understand what the center rate does, and you will figure out where you like it, where it feels correct. If when you make these changes, you can't obviously tell the difference that has been made, make a bigger change. I said, change it by 10. I'm wrong. The, the actual rates go. Hold on. The actual rates go by one or by 10. How do I not know this? I do know this, but I'm second guessing the shit out of myself right now. Come on, beta flight. Uh, basically, what I'm what I'm getting at here is that you need to make changes that are big enough that you notice the change, right? You want to easily. What? Oh, there it goes. That was weird. This rig was not. Turning on. <laughs> uh, rate profile settings. So yeah, actual. You want to make sure you're on actual. All right, I was wrong. I was wrong. Sorry. Yeah, it, it goes by tens. So uh, take your your center sensitivity, wherever it is stock, and go up by 50. Go up by 50 points. And then go, if if it's not totally obvious the change that that made, go up by another 50 points. And then come down by 100. And then go down by 50. And then come, and, and by that point, you will understand what that is changing. If not, go up by 100, go up by another 100. Right? Like, make changes that are big enough that it's obvious what it's doing. In the process of doing that, You'll make a change, it'll feel better or worse. You'll make another change, it'll feel better or worse. You'll go all the way the other direction, it'll feel better or worse. You'll figure it out, right? You'll, like, you'll figure out, like, like maybe it was, like, better, worse, 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 bang, better. There it was. Or maybe it'll be worse, worse, better, better. There you go. Now keep pushing. Keep pushing until it gets worse, right? And you're going to do that with... And, and so do that with pitch, roll, and yaw. Do it on the vertical. Change all three at once on the center, center stick sensitivity. And then go over to the maximum uh, velocity, maximum rotational velocity. Same deal. But you're going to change that by 100. So you're going to go from, I think the default is 670. You're going to go to 770. You're going to go to 870. You're going you're gonna to be able to tell a difference. Um, and then you're going to go all the way down to 570. And the same thing will happen. Better, better, maybe. Keep going. Better, 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 worse. Bang. There it is. Back it right off. What what you really want to try to do, though, is um, this is the same for, like, focusing cameras. You want to change it, uh, figure out which direction you want to change it that makes it better, 
and then you want to go again for better and then you want to keep going until it gets worse and then you want to swing back the other direction until it gets worse and then you want to you're oscillating and then you want to find that middle point so you basically want to figure out on either side like when it gets bad on either side and then you want to smack in the center and in, in the center of that Th this is the best way uh to change your rates you there might be a situation where it's like this is different but it's not necessarily better that means you need to keep going if you change your your max rotational by 100 and you're like oh it's different but i don't know if it's better or not push it another 100 if you're still thinking that same thing, push it another 100. At some point, you're going to be like, this is unflyable or like this is obviously worse. Parf you you got to keep going until you get to that point. Otherwise, you won't know where that limit is because maybe it just keeps getting better. But maybe like you're not realizing that it's better yet. You're just it just feels different. Just keep going. Just keep pushing. You're not going to hurt anything by pushing rates. Be, don't don't be afraid of that at all. Uh, the, the only real fear is that you can't get it as good as it is right now, but you took that screenshot. So you're going to be able to revert back to exactly where it's at today. Right. Um, and then the third thing you're going to do it on is expo. That's the third column over expo is the most important. And I love the way that beta flight did this. I love that they put the center sensitivity first on the left and then they put the maximum rotation and then they put the expo. Because if you just do it left to right, it's that's the best because the first two columns, you're going to kind of get in the zone and you're going to figure this process out of pushing it too far and then bringing it back and then pushing it too far and then bring it back. By the time you get to Expo, you'll be way more dialed in on what is actually going on. And the Expo is the most important. Uh, and I think it starts out almost zeroed. So you're just going to push. You're just going to push the Expo higher and higher and higher until it gets to a point where it feels dumb and then you're going to start backing it off and you'll do this little, you're doing this, right? And then you find that center point and then leave them alone. Leave those rates alone that you decide on uh, for a couple of months and then revisit after a couple of months. Once you're totally adapted to those rates, revisit it, do that same exercise again, move them around. You might find that now that you've, like when you change rates, you learn a lot about your flying and how the rates work and the quad. Um, and so for the next like couple of months, you're going to really dial in on that and you're going to really get comfortable and build your muscle memory on that rate profile. Um, and then the next time that you change it, you're going to be way more dialed in. You're going to be way more understanding of what's going on. And, and yeah, that second time you change them you can probably leave those alone for years. Uh, but yeah, get to a good point now and then leave it alone for a while. Let your muscle memory kind of settle and set in uh, and then hit it one more time. And then you can just leave it alone for damn near ever. Uh, unless you want to change your flying style. Like if, if you want to change your flying style to be more cinematic at some point, you're going to want to lower your rates. Um, so yeah, there's that. Great question, man. Thank you for asking that question. It's a great conversation that needs to be had more often because uh, rates are like 90% of what your flight footage looks like. I'm trying to find out where I was at in chat. Uh, Veritas Uza says, what's a good uh, Mobula 6 AIO replacement? There aren't, there aren't any. That's why I'm so upset. There are none. I, I shit you not. There are none. Um, it's maddening. It's it's absolutely maddening. I guess the T motor is the closest that we've got, but I I don't I don't like the T motor AAO. There's a bunch of things I don't like about it. Uh, if you do get the T motor AAO, uh, which I have on this guy actually, um make absolutely sure that you backdate it to BlueJ.16. Uh, it does not work right without Betaflight.16. It falls out of the air and shit. Um, but yeah, it's heavy. The, 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 one of the main things about the T-Motor AIO is that it's significantly heavier than the Mobula 6 AIO. Uh, the pad layout is not as good. 
uh, you have to solder the camera down and there's something else. I think it's a BMI 270 gyro, which I don't love. Not the end of the world, but um, yeah. Uh, Seawill says, no solder, just measured from the UFL. What? No solder, just measured from the UFL to have about 8 to 10 millimeters covered and 12.9 millimeters unshielded. Basically cutting off the lump at the top and a bit more, about half the size. Uh, I'm talking the 5.8. Oh, I, you know, I've never looked up how did, um, how much uh, active element a 5.8 antenna wants. That's interesting. So it looks like it's 12.9, according to Simon. Very cool. Mothy says, uh, do you use the same motors tab to verify that all the motors are spinning at the same similar RPM? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's one of the beautiful things about RPM filtering is that you get that uh, RPM data in there. Stormrider says, you should compare two identical quads, one with direct soldered motors. Uh, I save 0.8 grams. What? Uh, I've done it myself and I've seen other people do it. And the weight savings is point, between 0.2 and 0.3 grams. How are you saving 0.8 grams uh, and get more power and efficiency? Uh, and when you have multiple quads, uh, you don't need to solder on the spot uh, in case of a broken motor. Um, that's true. Like if you're going to build identical rig, if you're going to go hard on racing, right? What you want to do is build identical rigs and a whole bunch of them so that on site, when a rig breaks, you just throw it in the back of the car and grab the next one. Um, for me doing tons and tons and tons and tons of testing, that doesn't work, right? Like me direct soldering motors is a complete disaster. Like that is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of extra work. You know, I'll do a live stream and I'll change five, six sets of motor sets of motors, right? Um, what's three, six, 12, that's 60, 70 solder joints, 30 gauge solder joints. That's, that's a nightmare, right? That's a two hour stream that turns into a six hour stream. That's it's, it's unreasonable. Um, and yeah, again, like for freestyle pilots, they're going to crash hard. Um, it just, maybe you guys aren't like me. I, you know, a lot of this is based on my personal experience. My personal experience with direct soldered motors is that it's, it's exactly annoying enough to, to have to change them that I won't change that motor. And I'll just let that quad fly like ass until that motor is completely destroyed and I have to change it. And that sucks. That, that's that's just not but maybe you guys are way more um uh on top of of doing that stuff than I am right maybe that's just me maybe maybe that's just me being super lazy um but I don't think it is I bet you it's not um you're not wrong storm rider and and uh, look direct soldered wires versus a connector sure there's there's always going to be some amount of loss in a connector um, but my main point is that there's not enough loss. Like, like these rigs that we've been building with connectors get over three minutes on a 300 mAh battery and they have ass loads of power. So runtime and power are not a problem. So I'm not going to solve a problem that doesn't exist and make something that's significantly more of a nightmare to work on. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that that's kind of my main thing. Like, if runtime and efficient, if runtime and power were a problem, I'd be way more willing to do it. But they're just not. They, they just aren't. I don't need to get more than three minutes of runtime. I don't need more power than than we already have. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's it's not solving an issue. It's not solving a problem. Direct soldering the motors. Um, I totally get it. I, I really do. I, I really do understand the whole soldering motor thing. And for racers, yep. You, you're you're going to do it because you need that weight save. You need that 0.3 of a gram and you need that extra efficiency and you need that extra power. That's the way racing works. Freestyle is different. And just quality of life stuff is, is different. And, you know, uh, I try to have all this shit be as efficient as possible. I want to spend as little time as possible on the bench um, and as much time doing the things that, that I enjoy with this. Um, and, yeah, this is a part of that. Daniel 1964 says, uh, hoping if Happy Model is going to direct solder, Newbie Drone will use more larger motor plugs on their AOs. Uh, I don't think we will ever see a day that Newbie Drone uses the larger motor plugs, mainly because they don't have the room. 
they they switch to the smaller plugs to to free up space and they cram more stuff onto their AIOs than everyone else. Um, so I, I I would not think that newbie drone would ever go back to the bigger motor plugs. I would love to be wrong about that, but I, I don't hold your breath. I, I'm I'm that is I do. You guys know that I talk to Kelvin a good amount, who's at newbie drone. This is not me. I don't have any inside information on that. I've never really asked him. I kind of want to ask him now, um, but this is not me like giving you guys a secret. This is just me taking a straight up guess for the record. Uh, Freelojo says the BLV4 is heavy and motor plug thing, but Tiny Whoop gives free newbie drone plugs when ordered. That's true. That's true. Yep, all very true points. Um, my main problem with the the newbie drone AIOs at the moment is that their uh, their OSD setup leads to having like a little bit of a muddier image, which on analog it's already kind of crappy. So, um, yeah. Gray Hat says Ali has a few Mobula Six ELRSs, the old version. You can tell because it's uh, ELRS SPI. New one is you are to think. Also, the weight is heavier. Uh, one gram on the old one. Interesting. If if you're basing that off of pictures, uh, don't. The, they put a picture up and they'll leave it there forever, and then they ship you whatever is on the shelf. So if that's based on the images that they have uploaded, don't trust that. They're probably going to send you the new one. Um, all right. It's been two full hours, and we haven't done anything that we were supposed to. But here we go. I'm caught up on chat, finally. Uh, Gray Hat says, based on product info, uh, same deal. I wouldn't be surprised if the product info never got updated. Um, I could totally be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, careful. I'm not going to order from... I, I, I just refuse to order from overseas anymore. I just wait for stuff to, to come uh, stateside. You know what else I want to try? I dug out these uh, 300 mAh fatty batteries. Uh, I'm going to see how these run. I charged them up. I'm going to see how these run on the uh, on the walk snail rig. Hold on. I need to grab uh, the walk snail goggles and the USB to HDMI cable. And I guess that's it. All right. So we are going to retest 0603 30,000 kV versus 802 30,000 kV here today. And then we're going to sort of wrap it up. Because we've been streaming for a long time already. But as always, you guys have filled the chat up with amazing questions. And uh, that's what I'm here for, man. I want to talk about what you guys have questions about. That is the best thing I can possibly do. In my opinion, as a YouTube donkey, as an FPV person. Come on. Hey, got it. All right, and let's plug them in here. I use this one cord when I go to the uh, drift car place and here at the desk. I should really get another one. But I don't want to get another one of this cord because this cord keeps doing that annoying ass disconnection thing uh, when, uh, when I move my head. So as soon as I find a good quality USB-C to HDMI cord. I will buy two of them so that I don't have to constantly unplug this thing. But I have not found it yet. Anybody out there in internet land happen to know a good USB-C to HDMI cord that's 10 feet, minimum 9 feet long uh, that uh, is a good quality? This is now the third one that I've bought from Amazon to give you some idea of the struggle I've had. Oh, crap. Here we go, turn this off, turn this on. Uh, fire this up. Welcome to Welcome. All right, goggles coming on. Quad getting powered up here. So this is a lighter battery. Um, this is not, this is just for funsies. This is, uh, me figuring out how to get like adjusted to these. I want to put a bunch of batteries in on these 603, 30,000s that are currently on it. Um, and to, to just get used to it so that when I change it over to the 802s, I can actually feel the difference. 
and I found a couple of extra batteries that'll help me do that. So yeah, I'm gonna run a couple of these guys here real quick. I've put uh, extra tape on a bunch of my fat boy batteries because on the previous best 75 millimeter frame, uh, the Mobula 7 V4, the batteries fit a little bit loose, uh, but on these Meteor 75 uh, Air frames, the batteries fit properly in there. So I'm not, now I'm having to pull all the tape off that I've put onto these batteries. So this is a 75 millimeter freestyle rig, uh, Meteor 75 Air frame, super lightweight battery, 0603s. This is about as lightweight as you're ever going to be able to build a Walksnail 75 freestyle setup and with like off the box stuff, out of the box stuff without going bananas. Eva FPV is in the house. What's up? We're at your house. Oh, Jesus. I'm just about to start flying. All right, hold on. I'll let you guys in. Come to the garage. Special guests. All right, this stream's going to go a little long. Shh. I got to be careful, though, because uh, Maggie and I have dance at 7. Uh, 38.65 grams. 38.65. No, 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 no. Back upstairs, bad boy. Back upstairs. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Um, hold on. Uh, I gotta free up some space so that there's actually somewhere. <coughs> ah, stop it! Stop it! Stop that! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Beat him. Put quiet down. Beat him up. Give him a good slap. Stop it! 38.65 grams. That's pretty light. That's all up. Uh, with one of these tiny little batteries. Alright, hold on. I got all the walk snail stuff on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, please! Alright. Quick flight, just because I have everything turned on. And then... Ah! Look who it is! I left it a surprise. <laughs> It's Izzy and Eva! Alright. Um, hold on. Since this is all powered up, let's just do this real quick. And then... Settle down. Settle down. And then... We'll hang for a minute. Hey! There we go. Alright. This, and this, and... Here, I'm gonna move chat over. So that you guys can see it. And... See how that just blacked out, friends? That's this cable. That's this cable being a dick. <laughs> so here's this, uh... Oh, God! <laughs> Danzilla said sounds like trouble. He's so right. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, guys, I broke I broke a uh, oh, I got you. shot glass last night with a tiny whoop. I got you. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I got you. Hold Teddy. Up. Hold up. Teddy. Look at this dog in HD. <laughs> oh, that nose! <laughs> Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Buddy. Careful. There he is. Let's chase him around. Let's chase dog. Yo! He jumped up at it on that one. I saw that. Um, this Let's feels pretty good with game. this lighter battery. Hey, Denzella. Ooh. It's still heavy, though. What up, Off Axis? Still heavy, though. What I'm chasing with these six... All right, so see the... Look at the begin... The sharp... Uh, battery's too low. Hold on. Let me swap the battery. <laughs> Rejected. Right. I can't land on hands. I, I, I am so bad at landing on hands, I have no practice. idea why. That's true. Um, have you considered getting good? What I want you guys to notice is the beginning and end of... The moves. That's what I think the 603s might be doing better, which makes sense. It's a taller bell that's lighter, 
Uh, it should have better Sorry. response time. And so that's what we're looking at here. What's, what did you guys do all day? Slept in. Oh, oh that's the best. Why? Why? Like five in the morning. So. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we were hanging until late so, last yeah. night. We had a blast. Your chat's not I tried, very happy. Uh, Where is uh, it? Driving Sim in VR. And got sick. Last night and <laughs> almost got sick. <laughs> where did... Where did... What? Hmm? Where did walk snail go? It did the walk snail thing. What's happened? Oh, there it is. That was weird. I think it's this cable. Uh, the that the is the goggle battery getting low. Uh, can you do me a favor? There's a goggle battery in the top of the uh, uh, bag to the right. No, no, right uh, bag, flight bag. Yep, 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 in there somewhere. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have too many gates up. There are a lot of gates in here. It's hard being tall in here. Yeah, it is. Man. Don't eat that, please, doggy. Good boy. Didn't even see it. All right. Quick second battery here. Are you guys coming dancing with Maggie Knight tonight? Is that a thing? Is it a is. Thing? Yeah. I can't dance. I can't Neither can that. I. That's why you go to a place where they teach you. <laughs> can I just intentionally be bad? Everybody is. It's it's insane. <laughs> like it's great. It's perfect. All facts said, this is my first time here. Absolutely not. If you go upstairs, Maggie will explain it all to you, and she would love to see the two of you. Okay. At some point, so make sure you... Is she here? What time are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's here. Uh, it starts at 7, and it's like 15 minutes away. Mm. Cool. So you're more than welcome to come, but if you don't want to, I, believe me, I get it. But <laughs> I've been actually having a lot of fun. No, we can do hard sense. things in life. We can do scary things. All right, here we go. Cable's working. Uh, I think it's in Wi-Fi mode, though. It is indeed. Why? Why did it not bind? Because... ELRS. Just gotta turn that off. Yeah, just turn the Wi Fi thing off. You need the Wi Fi. You... Let's go to the Lewis I screen. ain't turning shit off! How do you even turn that off? You doing it in the I don't in the know web... how you do it with the uh, web UI. The AI. You gotta connect to the Wi Fi the first time. No. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. I think you can do it in the in the Lewis script. Why is it. What, I don't know. What? Oh. This is. This is this beta FPV board does this sometimes it uh is that the one i flew yesterday it just did the exact same thing comes unbound at random and you have to rebind it it's very weird wait a second why do i have the tx at 100 packet rate so Holy high shit. <laughs> all right hold on is it still not oh and it's uh, walk snail is shitting the bed <laughs> Look how quick it brings the temperature down. 117, 114, 112. 110, 109. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it just comes unbound sometimes. It's so strange. Uh, bind, press the sound. Bind or press. has too much energy. <laughs> Wait, now it's... Is it bound now? No, it's still not bound. Bind mode. Press the send bind request. What do I have to unplug it and plug it three times? Is that the deal? One... So. Two... Three. Bind mode. Press the send bind request. Binding. And now I think it's good. Very strange. Press the send bind request. Come on. Come on, you can do it. That was the cable. Yep, now it's fine. Ain't that weird? Mm -hmm. It's just these beta FPV boards that do that. All right, let's let this VTX cool down. This battery's probably damn near dead now. Yeah, 3.4. <laughs> That's a whole battery. That's a whole 300 mAh battery. Without the props spinning a turn. Yikes! Alright, hopefully it doesn't unbind itself this next time. For no effing reason. 
Yeah, isn't that crazy? It'll eat an entire 300 mAh battery on the bench in like, what was that? Five minutes? <laughs> oh, for God's sakes. All right, come on, here we go. Wait, wait, no, let's stop flying these stupid 300 mAh batteries and we'll go to the 450s. Uh, all right, so this is the actual test. Let's see. What's up? Uh, again, pay attention to the beginning and the end of flips and rolls. I think it's a little bit sharper on these 603s than the 802s. Let's find out together. Further forward. There you go. Where's OBS? There's OBS. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Mm -hmm. I don't trust this cable. <laughs> 450 million milliwatts. Yes, we made it. All right. Here we go. Oh, boy. This. I'm very spoiled by the analog rigs upstairs. Oh, God, no. Well, there's some durability testing. 603, 30,000s on the by blades. Let's only turn left. Uh, I'm I'm just you have to use so much more throttle for both 75s and okay. digital shit. And when it's both It's just hard. It's just hard. Heard that one? Yeah, that was full throttle forever. Full throttle. Let's do a big power loop. Full throttle forever. I mean, at the bottom it's okay and the battery's dead. That's so much full throttle. Oh my god. <laughs> that big slow catch. Battery's dead as you do another five laps around the fucking living room. Yep. Oh god. Alright, we're getting some crashes in, which is good. Let's see if this walks nail. Shit, well, hold up! Ah! So, where's this runtime at? Minute and 22? That was an awful lot of full throttle, though. You're... That looks good. Alright. Uh, minute and 32. Bouncing back to 3.7. Nope. Almost. Yep, there it is. 3.71. It'll probably stop around there. 3.72 maybe. So, I mean, that's a dead battery. Nope, back down to 3.70. So, that's a dead battery in a minute and 30. I don't... Uh, I don't like that about these 603s. I think the 603s might be... I was just about Hungrier. to say I'm gonna get 603s on my ship, and I guess never mind. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't understand why the heavier 802s run for longer. It, it should not be like that. Other than if these are making more power. That could be an indication that 603s well, you said they have more stator volume, right? are making more power. They do. They do. Yeah. They do. Uh, okay. But what we're doing here today is flying a bunch of batteries in a row on the 603s to try to get adjusted. And then we're going to do one last battery on the 802s. So let's just keep going with that. Vertos user says, we can't see what you see when you're flying. The goggle video cut out. Um, it cut out for a second, oh, but it came back. I don't this know. cable sucks. This cable's getting worse and worse. It's there now. All right. Yeah, you're, you're it's there, there now. now. Sorry, guys. Oh. Now it's out. I just saw it. Now it's back in. Oh God! Jesus Christ! What? Why? Why would I do that? I was looking for Teddy. I wasn't looking where I was going at all. There he is! Jesus! Teddy jump scare. Oh boy! I didn't think he'd be right there. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. There he is. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Oh god! You just decked your dog. <laughs> Did I hit him? Yeah. Whoops, sorry buddy. You seem okay with it? Uh let's he see. Seems fine. Let's yeah. find out. He's not running away. Look at that prominent anus. He's good, he's fine. That's getting clipped. <laughs> First off, very tough weasel is a great username. <laughs> but he asked if you were really going dancing. You got so going many good Bowl, usernames in your chat. Oh god yeah. In which case I say yeah. If my only two choices were going out dancing or watching the Super Bowl, 
You'd, you'd see me... Oh, God! I was going to say you'd see me break it down, but you'd actually just see me break a knee. <laughs> this is hard to fly, man. This, this shit... This is such a heavy rig to fly in the house. Oh, the battery's dead already? What's happening? I'll try it. In fairness, I did charge these batteries! Uh, like two days ago. So they have been sitting for a bit. Ugh. Yeah, doesn't the dog look dapper in his sweater? Oh, it's the best. That sweater on this dog. CMY so cute. CMYK is a fan. Mm -hmm. So am I. He knows what's up. He does know what's up. Man, the battery sits at 3.4 for a while. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare! Alright, well, my battery's done anyway. Can somebody help me? Yeah. Is he at Ciotti's house? This How is so weird. It's out. less weird than you think, bro, actually. Alright. Uh, one more battery, and then, um, and then we're gonna do the switch as quick as possible. Uh, and then fly the 802s, and yeah. Any questions you guys have for Eva or Izzy, hurry up, because I'm trying to not have this be a super long... I mean, it's already been a super <laughs> long stream, but I try not to go too far over two hours, because... Durable for dog? <laughs> asking, <laughs> asking people to watch for two hours is a lot as it is. Uh, Alright, last one. I'm going to do lots of flips and rolls so that we can hopefully uh, get a good feel for... Response time! Response time! Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, get your ass back down to Baltimore. I plan to. I'm down there all the time. I'll come uh, back out. Hit me up on Instagram. I'll no. come fly. No! No! I need help again! No! <laughs> no. no! I think it's on the blanket. No! <laughs> no! Ooh, Poppy! I don't do flips and rolls, so they like... Why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? I get, like, weirdly disoriented by them. No! How could I have possibly gotten it? No, there we go. There you go. You got it. Y'all looks good. Y'all is pretty crisp. Y'all need to come to Canada. Hey, there we go, Eva. We know somebody in Canada now. Oh, oh there's a bunch of people in Canada. We were just yeah. talking about that. Mm -hmm. No, I know a couple, but I don't know where in Canada they are. I was just saying I wanted Canada's to go to Canada. Place. Yeah. yeah. Where, off axis, where in Canada are you? If, if you're cool with doxing yourself in chat. <laughs> Alright, I think I'm I think I'm kind of tuned in to this rig a little bit. I think I'll be able to feel a difference. I hope. The run to I mean... Oh, he's in Vancouver, shit. The <laughs> run time is a problem, though. Whoa, okay. Didn't mean to do that. And Dan's in, uh, Ontario. Danzil is in Ontario? Hell yeah. Yeah, I've been wanting to hit up Canada... Ah. Uh, a lot. Lately. I'll be good. I definitely will. Right. Did that dog just try Teddy. to take you out? I almost tripped over Teddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, so there you guys go. There's the the performance and lack of runtime with the 0603. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna add some Izzy flair to the, to the stream, you know. Uh, now we're gonna switch as quick as we can and fly the 802s, and I hope that you see the runtime go up. Are you swapping motors? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna swap frames, actually. This is the quickest way to, yeah. to test motors on these. Um, this is yeah. why I need to go back to plug Switching motors. Switching over to 802s. Because I'm a psychopath. Mm -hmm. You are. We've been talking about that for, like, half of this live stream. Soldered versus, uh, plugs. Um... I literally only soldered because the board I got came with just pads, and mm. it didn't have the pads with the holes in them, right. so I couldn't like put the plugs on. I mean, I could, but fuck that. It's looking like Happy Model did exactly that on their new Mobula 6, which is very sad, which makes me just want to scream. Which means pay. I ended up clipping the plugs off my VCI yep. motors, which... Yep. And yeah, now they're plugless forever. Like, it's not like you're going to solder the plugs back on. I mean... Fuck no. You could, but you're just not going to. So, here we go. Come on, chat. You've got two people that aren't me here. Oh. Ask things. This one. Danzella, the cylinder is the same as the last one. Uh, for, <laughs> I haven't for, flown it in, like... For folks that are just listening, read the question. Read, read oh, his whole comment. Uh, said, Eva, how's the cylinder going? Uh, yeah, I haven't flown it in, like, three months. But still in one piece. Give a better answer um, than that. It's still fucking beautiful. It's yeah, it's it still is. beautiful. Oh my god, it is. It's like the best. Flies amazing. It's the best lifter build um, I've ever seen. 
Maybe not the best, but it's it is so the, gorgeous. It is the prettiest. That's what I mean. Okay. <laughs> it's hot shit. Yeah. It is hot shit. This is some really dope, like 13 inch rigs. Uh, those are terrifying. Arrow in the back. <laughs> arrow in the back. Oops, I'm putting it in Yours is the wrong side of the, side of the frame. Nine inch? Mm hmm. Yeah. Nine inch? I don't think I knew that. Yeah, you did. No wonder why the prop selection is so limited. Yeah, there's like Gemfan nine inch three for options. the rest of your there's life. HQ. There's three. Yeah. There's Gemfan and then there's Master Airscrew or something. And oh, really? And only uh, one of those matters. No. Yeah. Is that it? Master that... Airscrew. I think those so. guys. The Master Airscrews might actually be pretty cool. Um, they're very. They're probably very fragile, right? Uh, I don't know. They're fragile, but they're very. They have a lot of like really really high pitch props. Ah, they right. Have, right. Like nine by eight by three props. And it's like. <laughs> What? It, it, they're no steep. shit. They make a ton of power. Nine by motors. eight. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I've never heard of a prop like... having that much pitch. Ow. That's uh, crazy. Eva, we got a good one. What are your question for Eva and Izzy? What are your rates and what current rig are you flying? This is just the same answer. Yeah. So uh, we use actual rates. Uh, center fifty, max at five seventy, and expo at point five seven. Yeah, you guys think my rates are weird and unflyable. They Try feels that. so They're, perfect. It's it's actually pretty similar, but it's it's it is noticeably slower. Yeah, we're gonna get to web browser. I'm gonna definitely notice it because I think your rates are on a couple of my rigs right now. Uh, next time I go to fly mm -hmm. those rigs, I'm gonna be like, "What the fuck is happening here?" <laughs> I fly off axis that I fly block grinder rates now. Fun fact: off axis, yes. block grinder doesn't even know what rates he flies. <laughs> he just flight. put in some numbers when he started 76 years ago. Uh, Around the time of uh, Jesus ago. Christ's Wait, how do you birth, do... and then how do you do like the virtual one. Isn't it in this? update firmware? Isn't it somewhere in here? I haven't done it before. I've heard people talking about it. I've never really. I'm gonna try to do, to do the, like the rate thing. The, the oh, that's mapper a curves great... next to each other. I've never. I, I the virtual thing. I was always like, when would I do that? I probably have the old configurator. That's probably what's going on. Maybe. Why do I not have propellers on this? What's that one question? That's yeah, a I lack see of at, I see at Izzy. I'm curious what it says. There's your text message. <laughs> Here. Uh, Wait, I gotta plug these motors in. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, bots rates are so Things weird. Things are being looked up. He, he flies very linear, like almost like he has a little bit of expo, but not a lot at all. I'm surprised he doesn't just fly default rates. A lot of people no, fly well, default rates. That's what he flew for a long a time. Lot of people. Yeah, there we go. That's what he flew for a what long time yours? because if uh, bots method is just forty seven hundred seventy seven seventy or seven hundred uh seven hundred yeah oh. and then expo seventy seventy so much expo point seventy that actually is a lot of point expo. seventy yep. yeah I did point seven for a while when I had my max rate at five seventy or at yeah wait Here, hold on no pull this pull I this forget over. what I was at numbers pull are this hard. whole window over so that the chat's visible oh, yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, VPro says that's why we love Bot Grinder. Hell yeah, DJ's the best. Okay, wait, Bot Although Grinder has a rate preset on Beta Flight. That's fucking hilarious. Does he really? Good for him. How the hell did he do that? I haven't figured out how to do yeah, that. Yeah, so it's just like the last twenty five percent of the of the stick that it's. I think all Bot does is up his rates to like eight hundred or something, and then just hit save. It's actually really I think. close. Right. Yeah, it, it, I can yeah. I can tell in the middle. I can really tell mm -hmm. at the end of the stick travel though, which is exactly what this Jesus. shows. That's where they Cold separate. power uses thirteen hundred degrees. All right, steel. God yeah, I mean, I, how do you do that? I don't. Rates. I don't get that. I mean, it's just timing. You just time your your snap rolls to be way quicker, right? Almost yeah. like you're doing them on a but tiny. How do you do you fly a shit ton of expo? <laughs> Watch it be. Because I don't know how you <laughs> like get the center control feeling right with that high of a max rate. He's just better than us. I don't. I, no, usually, no, I don't no. think people have this the, that center control. You oh, with, with rates really that high until I don't think you can. Yeah, right it's up like, until right until like 80, 70, 80 percent throttle. Okay, percent. Mm, this is yeah. good. Motors are on. Thirty <laughs> hundred uh, twitchy mofo. Props out. <laughs> yes. And props out. 
All right, we're so almost there. This would be like the equivalent of learning talent to 30 center sensitivity. Keep talking to these two, chat. Interesting. I'm busy, and it's nice to have to not have to try to manage chat and talk and work on these. I might be, I'm able to do this a lot faster. Uh, hop into beta flight for me, mm. and we're gonna get these motors spinning in the right direction, uh, and away we shall go. There it is. Yeah. Here we go. Connect, and is there a battery that's not dead? There is. We got. This coming in here. Teddy is under the table, keeping an eye on things. Motors, motor direction. Please don't go full throttle. Wizard, start and spin. Oh, good. Motor one is correct. Motor two is not. Motor three is not. Motor four is. Good. Stop. Close. Retest. Motor one's good. Motor two is good. Motor three is not. And I thought I might have rushed that. Apparently it needs a second to lock in the changes. Motors two and three. Now we should be good. Risks. Motor one is correct. Two is correct. Three is correct. Four is correct. Interesting. So you can rush that. All right. We're good. 802s, same battery. Uh, 450 mAh heavier battery. <laughs> please, please let me be able to feel the difference. Please, 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 please. Uh, have we considered come stealing on, come Teddy? Come on, come on. And goggles uh, coming up. Yeah, we have we have considered stealing Teddy. He's got way too much energy though, mm -hmm. and I'm a sneaky bitch. So it's a thing in the South, man. People be stealing dogs. It's crazy. He doesn't already have one dog that's too much to handle. So. Oh, <laughs> that is so much. Oh, I need to. Right, come on, walk snail. Show a picture. Come to life. Come to life, walk snail. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to notice the difference. Here we go. 802 30 thousands. Feels about the same. Ah! Oh, In video. terms of flips your... and rolls. Okay, your video's back. Yeah. Your video dipped for a second, but you're good. Jesus. Just don't move your head at all. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's then, pretty much it. And get on Amazon and buy a new cable, like, right after stream. Mm -hmm. This is the third cable that I've tried from Amazon. Buy seven. Get and a good I, cable, then. I can't find them that are that are uh, nine feet long. Mm. It's hard to find a USB-C to HDMI that's this length. I mean, maybe that's why, because they're not supposed to be that long. No, it's the connector. It's, it's the connector with the goggles. It's probably just the goggles. Could be. That walks now manufacturing. Um, yet again, I can't feel the difference between 802s and 603s, which is not the end of the oh, world. Okay. Cool power, this is basically running a lot of expo on this 1300. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, nice. So, no, that's probably pretty nice then. Yeah. Yeah. I do not understand the old rate system at all. Oh, it's brutal. I... Oh, just beta flight rates? Yeah. It, yeah, they're confusing. It was a thing <sighs> it's stuck right on the couch. I got you. The, fuck. Right when I started flying, oh, it was upstairs? a thing. Upstairs, yeah. Um, I got you. Thank you. And then, like, within, like, two months after that, it had actual rates became a thing, and I never looked back. <laughs> yeah, actual rates. I was like, oh, this actually does exactly what it says? Yep. Great. There's no bleed over, mm -hmm. which is the big thing. Yeah. Yay! All right, end of the battery. There it is. We got the finger. It's, it's safe. Um, it feels about the same upstairs, and this is on a dead battery. Yeah, no, it's uh, this is. Uh, it might have a little bit less power. It should have less power. Oh, fart. Well, Eddie was uh, Eddie. Jesus, Teddy was hot on my tail there. Uh, I don't think I can feel a difference. That was a hard hit. <laughs> it was. The big difference is in the runtime. And the 802 is getting more runtime. Is like game over. I mean, that's. Yeah. That's it. It's 
this is the runtime up over two minutes, and I, I can't justify having the less runtime. So it's 802s. It's 802s. It's 802s. Retested. Glad that we retested. Kind of a waste of time, but needs to be retested. Uh, needed to be. It didn't need to be, but uh, I feel better if you're doing that. Uh, all right. Try so we're good. Any last second questions for Eva or Izzy? Hurry up. Uh, this this stream is way too long. I think we should be good. Uh, 802, 30,000 kV motors. Next time, we will test 802, 33,000 kV motors. Uh, that's what I'm most excited about, uh, to be super honest. But this was good. This was good to kind of double check this because 0603 is a super interesting motor. Um, I didn't want to, but th that runtime, I mean, a minute and 20 seconds and a minute, 26 seconds runtime. That's, that's too short. That doesn't work. Uh, I gotta, you gotta draw the line somewhere in terms of runtime. Uh, last question of the live stream is going to be from Jamie Lee FPV. What do you think about, uh, the run cam split three nano on a whoop thinking about putting it on, uh, Mobula seven. Will it work? I don't think so because I believe the run cam splits are 20 by 20 mounting and whoops are 25 and a half by 25 and a half. But let me look it up real quick and confirm run cam split three micro and nano. Uh, oh no, that does look like 25 by 25. Uh, okay. Let me just try to double check that. Uh, split three nano. Nope, that looks that looks twenty by twenty. Split three light. Split three light. It looks like is what you would want. Yeah, split three light. That's a twenty five by twenty five. I see you. Hi. I see you back there. Hi. Twenty by twenty. Here it is. Yep, 25 by 25. So you need the run cam split three nano whoop, or maybe they call it light. But just confirm the mounting dimensions. Um, and then, so the, the run cam split cameras, what you're going to get is slightly less field of view than you're, than you're used to, uh, and slightly more latency than you're used to. But you're going to have onboard DVR in HD that looks awesome. So if you're on analog and you're not on uh, walk snail, you're not on HD zero. This is the only way for you to, H to get HD. Um, and if you can get over the extra latency and the lack of field of view, it looks great for what it is. The split cameras have always delivered really good HD. Um, but yeah, my problem has always been the, the lack of field of view. Uh, I'm looking that up right now. Uh, the Recording field of view is fine, 165 degrees. Uh, it's the FPV field of view that is typically less. And they don't even have that spec in here, it doesn't look like. They have not spec'd out the, the FPV is field the of view. Or 165 and 69 and then 130 and 4 by 3 Yeah, which is, I mean, already... So it must be a 16 by 9 sensor in there. So already when you go to 4 by 3 your field of view comes all the way down to 130 degrees, which is, that's pretty narrow. Um, and then I think that in the FPV view, right, they specifically call out that this is the recording field of view. Um, usually once you get the FPV field of view, it's even smaller. So it's going to be even less than 130. That, that's where I've always had issues with the split stuff. But all that being said, if you can get used to that narrower field of view, um, the HD footage on these run cam splits and the Caddick splits is awesome. It's, it's really, really good. So, yeah, you'll get great HD. It'll just be a little bit more difficult to fly. Stephen Woodruff says, favorite cover colors of everyone on stream. You guys can do that. Uh, Brad Mondin says, your flying looked a lot better on the 802s, just saying. Um, it didn't feel any better. I was, it, maybe it was better. Uh, maybe I was just getting used to flying the fat old 75 millimeter walk snail rig in the house. My favorite color is uh, a combo. Pastel pink with cyan. There you go. Very cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. 
is Izzy's new logo. It's super cool. Uh, thanks for hanging out, friends. This stream is way long. Uh, you had your chance. Have a good night, Hopefully everyone. you got your questions answered. Peace, nerds. If not, sucks to be you. Bye-bye. No. Uh, here comes some more flying from the... What is happening there? Drift place. <laughs> yeah, when you don't hit stop on the uh, recording, mm. it gets mm -hmm. quite angry. Uh, see you guys on... What's today? Sunday? See you guys tomorrow night at 10. We'll do uh, Newbie Drone Cockroach 65 V3 giveaway. Uh, this is a very short file. Hold on. This is a very short file. Hold on. This is a longer file. Subtitles off. Bye, friends. Go, uh, go over to uh, Izzy and Eva's channels and subscribe or else I'll kill you. Somebody post the link. Uh, admin, post the link in uh, chat, please. I love you guys. Bye. I'm not ready. I love you guys. Bye. Yeah. What? There's There was balloons. What was yeah. that? Good, you did this. Oh. Wait. It doesn't do it all the time. What? Do it again. OBS is doing that? No, it's it's Mac. Oh. What? That's weird. Wow, anybody that'd be hating on Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Bye, guys. Be good. Hold on. There's no music playing. What? Why did this happen? Can you... What? Where is the audio going? What's happening? Maybe this will work. Probably won't. Is the volume turned down? The volume's turned down. That explains it. Be good, friends. Love you. Bye.